Tonight's WTOV9 High School Game of the Week featuring Bel Air and Youngstown Ursuline, brought to you in part by the Health Plan. Hardee's. Fox Run Hospital. And Imperial Plaza. Welcome to the WTOV9 High School Football Playoff Game of the Week. Actually, the second one on WTOV9. And tonight, this one features the Bel Air Big Reds and the Youngstown Ursuline Fighting Irish. I'm Bill Phillips, along with the coach, Rich Walensky. And coach, a little bit of a windy night. Bel Air likes to put the ball up in the air. They also like the attacking on the ground. Is the wind going to affect the passing game? Well, I, I think more than anything, as far as weather is concerned, wind is what affects a passer uh, even more than rain or, or, or muddy conditions. So the wind is gusting pretty good right now. And it was, it's not as bad as what it was earlier, but uh, you know, Belair's gonna have to be very, very careful, especially when they're throwing into the wind as opposed to throwing with the wind, Bill. Bel Air, you got a, a lot of uh, young talent on that team. Youngstown Ursuline, a team that has some experience, a team that is usually in the playoff hunt year in and year out. This is the first appearance for the Big Reds. Any advantage or disadvantage for either team in that category? Oh, I think so. You know, when you look at it from the standpoint of experience, Ursuline has been here on several occasions, and, you know, they, they've got the playoff experience. They know how to prepare for the playoffs. They know what to expect. Uh, this is a new experience for the Bel Air Big Reds, but uh, it's one that, uh, you know, is, is, is going to be a learning experience for them and hopefully they'll learn very very quickly as the ball game gets started key for the big reds to come up a winner well i think that they have to mix the run in the pass real well like they did against martin's ferry they've got to keep ursuline's defense back on their heels if they can do that take advantage of davis a thousand yard passer and, and pitts who's a thousand yard rusher get a good game from their offensive line and play good defense they're going to be in the ball game right to the end should be a very interesting ball game. It's do or die for Youngstown Ursuline and the Bel Air Big Reds. The playoffs will continue right after this when we come back with the opening kickoff. And welcome back to the WTOV9 High School Football Game of the Week. It's playoff action, everybody. Youngstown Ursuline fighting Irish. The Bel Air Big Reds, Austin Town Fitch Stadium, and I'm Bill Phillips along with the coach Rich Walensky. Lisa kicked down on the sideline. She'll have all the inside scoop for us later on tonight. Right now, both teams heading out onto the field. Bel Air, their first ever appearance in the state playoffs. They've had a storied past and a wonderful tradition at Bel Air, but this is the first time they have reached the postseason coach. And a lot of emotion building to this game all week long for the uh, Big Reds. And as you can see, they have their sign up that they, they beat Ferry. They're our tribal. Now they're ready to go through the playoffs. And I'll tell you, they're really fired up. Uh, you know, it's a big emotional experience for any high school team to get into the playoffs, especially your first trip there. And, uh, you know, hopefully uh, Coach Magistro will have his kids ready to play focused on this game. It's a big, big game against a big, big opponent. Uh, you know, looking down at uh, Ursuline's schedule, Bill, they've played some real quality football teams, uh, Warren Harding, Erie P.A. McDowell, um, Campbell Memorial, I think, uh, was one of the teams that beat Catholic Central the first game of the season. Uh, Youngstown Boardman, Austin Town Fitch, Maslin Jackson, Brooke, Youngstown Mooney. So, you know, they uh, Ursuline has played a real quality schedule, and uh, their coach feels that, uh, you know, that's by design. They want to play uh, tough teams every year uh, to prepare them for the playoffs, and that philosophy is, has, helped, uh, has, has held them in pretty good stead through the course of the year. That has really helped them out. Someone that will be helping us out tonight is Lisa Kick, and she's down on the sideline. Lisa, what's going on? Hi, guys. Thanks a lot. A great showing here for the Big Reds. Their band just finished playing, welcoming the team on the field, and they have got a bunch of fans up in the stands. Almost a better showing than the Fighting Irish on the other side. They're ready for a great game. The first time their team has made it to the playoffs, and so they're all excited. We're excited. It should be a game, good game here tonight. Great atmosphere and also perfect weather, you guys. So back up to you. Thank you very much, Lisa. And indeed, a, a big crowd, a big following for the Big Reds. And we've looked at the size of the crowd earlier, Coach. And I'll tell you what, the Youngstown Ursuline, their fans only had to drive about 15 minutes. The big Reds had a longer drive, and they brought more support with them. Well, I tell you, uh, Belair is it's very, very well represented. I should say the Valley is very well represented here because I've saw I've seen a lot of people from uh, different communities. Ran into a couple friends of mine from uh, Buckeye Local and 
I uh, saw some people here from Martin's Ferry, so, you know, uh, a lot of people here following the Belair Big Red. Very, very important. Uh, Ursuline is uh, kicking off. They have the wind to their back, so Belair's going to be throwing into the wind uh, during this first quarter, and we'll see exactly how successful Jose Davis is going to be. Well, we are on their way. A kickoff coming down at the goal line, fielded there by the Big Reds, and that's Scott Pitts bringing it back, still on his feet, stretches out to the 20-yard line. A good return by Pitts. Uh, could have let it go into the uh, end zone and would have been able to take it as a touchback. We'll set the offense for you. Uh, the quarterback, Jose Davis, over 1,000 yards. Casey Coyne, the fullback. Pitts is your halfback. Uh, Scotty Coyne, Valor, Roth, and Kindler are the receivers. Boas, Boas uh, up front with Weber, Myers, Holt, and Farmer. They make up the offensive unit for the Big Reds. Davis is going to test the win. First down from scrimmage, and he fires one across the middle, making the reception number three. That's Scotty Coyne. He hauls it in. And it's a first down, so coach, I guess that's the strategy. If you're going to throw the ball, keep him low and across the middle and put some zip on him, and Jose Davis has a great arm. And I'll tell you, great protection, too. He had plenty of time to throw. Uh, Belair was in with uh, three wide receivers. They had coin in there in the slot. They had a split end to his side and also a split end back to the other side, doing the same thing, playing without a tight end right now. They're in a three-wide receiver, a three wide receiver set against uh, this big Ursuline defense. Davis back to pass again. That time Davis was looking to his left uh, over there uh, for his uh, wide receiver set to that side. Uh, didn't see anything open. Found a little opening up the middle. Took it up the middle for a gain of about five. It will bring up second and five. And I'll tell you, Davis is not a bad runner once he decides to, to tuck that ball and go with it. Second and about three. Pitts. Taken down at about the 38 or 39 yard line. It'll depend on the mark, and that'll bring up a third and three for the Fighting Irish. And here's a look at the defense for the Irish. Karlovich, Frasco, Courage, uh, McLandrick are up front. Then it's Burton, Dubal, Jones, and Curd playing as linebackers. Stargill, Teague, and Chambers, your defensive backs for the Irish. This so is the first third down situation for Belair. They're third and three. Davis back to pass. Quick little look to Coyne. He has some running room, and he's across the 45, and he has a first down. And there's and a the flag. flag. Comes in, so we may tack on some more. That was number 22, Rashad Chambers, the uh, free safety for Youngstown Ursula making the tackle, and it's a face mask violation, and they're going to tack 15 on to the end of the run. There it is, just a quick look into Coyne over the middle, and he's dangerous once he catches the football. There he is right there, face mask. We can't see it from here. You know, we should point out that... 15-yard penalty coach that'll take it all the way down yeah. inside the 40-yard line of Youngstown Ursuline. We should point out that Scott Coyne now holds all of the receiving records for Belair High School, and that surpasses even Joey Galloway, outstanding receiver for Ohio State right now. Scott Coyne, a player very confident in his abilities, and he can back it up on the field. And right now he has a couple of receptions early in this ball game, and the Big Reds inside the 40-yard line of Youngstown Ursuline and on first and 10. That's Casey Coyne, number 40. Vaulting himself into the line of scrimmage, maybe picked up a yard on the play. Take a look at it again, Coach. Nothing fancy on this there one. It is inside. A little trap play to Coyne. That was a real good play for them last week against Martins Ferry. But right there, there is nothing. Uh, the Youngstown Ursuline uh, defensive front recovers very, very quickly. Holds it to a short gain of about one. and bring up second and nine. And the Valoric and uh, number 86, that is uh, Mark Mason, are the two wideouts with Coyne in the slot. Davis back to pass again. Good protection. Has a man. Has a reception and a first down at the 21-yard line. Calling it in. Big number 86. Mark Mason. And he comes up with the reception. And it's first and 10 for the Big Reds. Very good pattern that time by Mason. He just pushes off his receiver and pushes him deep and then runs a, a real, real good uh, hook in here. Uh, he looks off uh, to his right all the way, dropping back, then looks back to his left and throws a strike right there to Mason for a big gain. It's going to be first and 10 from right outside the 25-yard line. 
of Youngstown Ursuline. First possession of the game for the Big Reds. They started at their own 20. Pitts on the handoff. Can't break the tackle. Someone had a hold of his right foot down on the bottom of the pile. Looked like big number 66 for Youngstown Ursuline. It's Mike Frasco, defensive tackle. I tell you, it looked like uh, Pitts had a little bit of running room that time, but Frasco did a good job getting a hand up, getting hold of an ankle, and holding him to a short gain of one. First game in the postseason for Bel Air in their school history. How important on this first possession is it to march the ball down the field like this? I think what they've done right now, even if they don't score here, Bill, I think what they've done right now, stringing several first downs together, being successful with the passing game, just you know throwing a run in there every once in a while to keep Ursuline honest, I think has got to be a confidence builder for them right now. They know they can play with Youngstown Ursuline. Davis back to pass, looking long, looking to the corner for Coin, and Out he overshoots everybody. I tell you, real good coverage that time by uh, number three of the uh, Fighting Irish, that's Jerry Howell, uh, who came in uh, and playing that defensive back over there, did a good job of uh, covering Coin all the way, didn't go for the fake. And here's Davis just airing it out, going deep into the corner of the end zone, trying to get Coin on a fade pattern. Uh, great throw. But the, even though this is an incomplete pass, Bill, what it does is it sends a signal to the Ursuline. I can throw this ball deep if I need to, so don't be sticking your nose up here too fast. And I'll tell you what, we were down on the field, a stiff breeze right in the face of Jose Davis, but he has the arm strength, and now he's getting some pressure. He has some good footwork, dumps oh. it off the pits, and... Just loses his footing at the 25-yard line, and he had all kinds of room to run, Coach. I tell you, he sure did, and right there he lost his footing. The ball was the pass was incomplete. Uh, he's looking for Coin, who's trying to run a little curl pattern right across the middle. Good pressure coming up the middle by Youngstown, and right there the ball is incomplete. Pitch tries to get ready to run, slips and falls. Will bring up fourth and about nine. Sean Valoric checks into the ball game for the Big Reds. He'll split out to the near side. Mason will go to the far side. Coin will be in the slot to the left. Coin in the slot to the left. It's Casey Coin and Pitts in the backfield. Fourth and nine for the Big Reds going for it here early in the game. Coin hauls it in at the 15-yard line. It's a first down. He has enough, and the Big Reds keep the drive alive. I tell you, he found the soft spot in that uh, Youngstown Ursuline zone. He just pushed straight off from his uh, slot position. Ran a little curl inside, found the opening between the uh, two linebackers and in front of the safety, and there the ball is complete, and Stargell, the safety, comes up and makes the tackle, but too late, first and 10 for Bel Air inside the 15-yard line of Ursula. Dave Bloomquist told me that I would be impressed with the arm strength of Jose Davis when I came to this game. Dave Bloomquist was right on the money with that one, Coach. He can throw the football. You know, you not only have to be impressed with his arm strength, but also with his composure for a sophomore. He's doing a great job. Pitts bounces to the outside. Nothing doing. Shut down there by the Fighting Irish, number five, coming up. And also number 51, Blaze Karlovic, was in there on a tackle. And number five for uh, uh, Ursuline was Mickey Kerr, the outside linebacker. Take a look at it again here, Coach. Nothing doing up front at least on this play little trap outside and i'll tell you number 51 the defensive end right there does a great job of just stuffing that to the inside no room to run short gain of maybe a half a yard still call it second and ten high formation play action davis backside pressure gets it away and it's intercepted at the five yard line so the backside pressure does the job for youngstown ursula the interception bill rhodes comes across and makes the play so the bel air big reds drive all the way down the field but they're turned away at the five yard line but as you mentioned coach a confidence builder to uh, show that you can move the football there is there's a little fake and now a bootleg back this one you can see number 33 coming with a lot of pressure right there forces Jose Davis to throw the ball a little high and right there is intended for coin running a crossing pattern the ball is intercepted by number four Bill Rhodes doesn't matter how long, strong your arm is you can't throw the football with someone draped all over you absolutely first and ten for Ursuline from their six yard line quarterback. quarterback draw off of what looked like was going to be a pitch Take a look at the offense for the Fighting Irish. Wirtz, Dubal, Karlovich, Plesak, Brian. I'm looking at, I'm reading off my list and I'm taking a look at the offensive backfield. Howell is the quarterback. He's the leader there of the backfield and the skill players. Now we take a look at the offensive uh, line up front. There it is, Wirtz, Dubal, Plesak, uh, Karlovich, and Brian up front. But I was reading my sheet and not paying attention.
Second down and about five. And the Big Reds there defensively swarming all over. Number 20, Trevor Stargill, as he is taken down. Holt, Boas, Ostrander, Farmer, the defensive line for the Big Reds this evening. Linebackers, Mamie, Hall, Marinelli, and Valoric. Defensive backs, Coyne, Pitts, and Tuttle. They'll have their hands full tonight. Great job that time by Josh S. Ostrander coming off his block and holding that to a very short gain. He's going to bring up third and four. Quick pitch. Stargill again. Bouncing to the outside. Cuts it back. Still on his feet. Out across the 25 and close to the 30-yard line before he is forced down. A big gain and a big first down on third and about four. I tell you, a Bel Air defense that fairly well. They had everything covered, and uh, Stargill bounced it to the outside. You'll see right here. They're doing a good job coming off the blocks there. You see number 53, Boss, doing a good job. Everything jumbled in, but they lose. They lose leverage on the ball, and Stargill, with his great speed, bounces it to the outside for a first down out near the 30-yard line, first and 10 official, for Ursuline. Official timeout down on the field. One of the offensive linemen for the Fighting Irish uh, had to uh, tie his shoe. The Irish will line it up first and 10 from their own 29-yard line, their first possession of the game. The Big Reds took their first possession from the 20-yard line, marched it all the way down to the Ursuline 5, and now it's Ursuline answering back with big chunks of yardage and another first down out across the 41 yard line the first down on the carry that was vince burton the fullback number 24 they ran a little trap inside did a good job of op opening up a hole and he hit it very very quickly upfield for a gain of uh, about 11 or 12. here it is right here there's the trap and an outstanding job by that offensive line and uh, once burton gets into the secondary very very difficult to bring down Jeremiah Johnson uh, making the tackle in the defensive backfield for the Big Reds, number 28. Burton again, this time stacked up after a short gain. He'll pick up maybe one on the play. We'll call it second down and nine, but the defensive lineman doing a good job, and the linebackers coming up and filling on that play, Coach. Number 16, that's uh, J.R. Hall, inside linebacker, comes off his block very, very nicely and is able to get there and do a good job, uh, along with uh, big number 53, Dave Bohas, also in on the tackle on the left side of that Belair defensive line. They'll bring up second and about eight. Wing guy for Ursuline. Howell back to pass, looking downfield, looking long, and he overshoots everybody. Good coverage all the way. Number two, Jason Tuttle had good coverage on the intended receiver. That was the wing back, uh, Eric Dubel, who was trying to get open from his wing back position, but uh, really well covered. Take a look at it Here's again, Howell. Replay number three, that's uh, Jerry Howell. Little play action and going deep with the ball, trying to hit the wing back on a streak pattern, but well covering the ball, well overthrown, bring up third and about nine. Looked like Howell may have had a little happy feet, not real uh, patient back there, had some more time and just decided he was gonna send it long on second down. Third and eight. Howell back to pass and he sets up the screen, but no one is home. The only Burton, number 24, the intended receiver, but the Big Reds bust through. They break up the play, and the Big Reds have proven that they can hold the, hold the opposition. Tell you, number 37 had great pressure. It's Nick Marinelli. There it is right here. They let him through, but uh, there's no one there to, to get set up in the screen. They're looking for number 24. Uh, that is their fullback. Vince Burton, and he was uh, somewhat held up and wasn't able to get into the screen. Bill Rhodes, who had the interception that turned the Big Reds' first drive away to do the punting, and he gets a high-angled kick down at the 24-yard line. Coyne lets it bounce. It rolls all the way inside the 10-yard line down to the 5, and really maybe a punt he should have tried to fair catch, but we're going to take a timeout, see if the Big Reds can go on another march down the other end of the field. Right now with 2.01 to go in the first quarter. It's nothing-nothing. We take a break. And welcome back to the WTOV9 High School Football Playoff Game of the Week. I'm Bill Phillips along with the coach, Rich Walensky. Down on the sideline, Lisa Kick. And she'll be checking in later on in the ball game with all the inside information, coach. And she will have it all. 
First and ten for the Big Reds. Pitts on the carry, straight ahead, spinning for a couple before he is stacked up. Bill McLandrick on the tackle played well off of his block, got back to the inside and was able to make the tackle after a short gain of about two. It'll bring up second and eight. Here's the replay right here, trying to run a little little power. And uh, Scotty Coyne, or I'm sorry, that's not Scott Coyne, but uh, Scott Pitt. Casey Coyne trying to uh, put a block on McClandrick, and uh, McClandrick played off the block very, very well, was able to make the tackle after a short game. Second down and seven for the Big Reds. Split to the near side, number seven, Keith Pitts. Uh, it's his Scott bouncing across the 10 yard line and out to the 13 on the carry. I tell you, the offensive line of Valera got good movement on uh, Ursuline's defense that time, and uh, Pitts uh, started over the left side and was able to bounce it back to his right. Here it is right here. Good job, as you see right here, by that offensive line, number 66, uh, for uh, Belair doing a good job in there. That's Chad Farmer, and was able to get some movement on the Ursuline uh, defensive line. A gain of about six, it'll bring up third and two. 45 seconds to go on the opening quarter. It's been a quick first quarter. Really two possessions for both teams. A long drive at the beginning of the game for the Big Reds ended at the five yard line on the interception. Right now they have it again and they're moving again. They started on their own five and uh, someone has jumped offside and Jose Davis with maybe a hard count got him to jump coach and uh, the Big Reds will pick up a first down on the penalty. Vince Burton number 24 an inside linebacker lined up as an outside linebacker coming on a blitz and just was a little bit too soon. Uh, Came across, was offside, and that'll give Valera a first down. Here it is right here. You'll see him number 24. He's just a little too anxious, and I'm sure it was that count of Davis uh, that made that Ursuline defense move prior to the snap. First and 10 for the Big Reds at their own 18-yard line. Davis hand off to Pitts, and he's tripped up and taken down at the 19-yard line, gain of one. And that is going to be the last play of the first quarter of this playoff game between Bel Air and Youngstown Ursuline. And the first quarter will come to an end scoreless. But, uh, Coach, some interesting uh, plays that we can talk about when we come back from this break about the first quarter of play. Right now, we take a timeout after one quarter of play. Nothing, nothing between Bel Air and Ursuline. Welcome back to our game of the week. It is the Big Reds versus the <laughs> Right now, heading to the second quarter, we are at 0 0. The cheer for the Big Reds. Very excited, right, ladies? <laughs> Bill and Rich, up to you. Thank you, Lisa. Huh? Big Reds cheerleaders are. Uh... They're ready to go. They're fired up, just like the team. Uh, Belair had a, a, an excellent first quarter, moved the ball uh, fairly well. Uh, that first drive uh, stopped by an interception uh, down inside the 25-yard line of uh, Ursuline, and uh, now taking over at their own five after a punt roll dead on their five-yard line. They've moved the ball out to the 20. Uh, they've got a second and about nine, so Belair has, uh, has been has been moving the ball fairly well and have to have some confidence going into the second quarter. Well, let's talk about the head coach, John Magistro, for the Big Reds, uh, an outstanding coach, and he is making his first appearance in the postseason. You've been in the big games before. How tight is he coming into this one? Well, you can tell by his haircut. He's got to be real tight. That's got to be one of the worst haircuts I ever saw in my life. I'm glad you said it first, Coach, because I was going to bring that up. <laughs> he had a deal with his team on first down. Casey Coyne with a nice carry out for about or check that on second down, a carry of about five yards. It'll bring up third and about two. But he had a, a bet with his team, or uh, I shouldn't say a bet, but a wager, that uh, he would uh, he would shave his head if they beat Martin's Ferry. And, you know, he should have shaved the whole thing off well, because you, what he right. has now is... Because what he has right now really looks bad. <laughs> I mean, Josh's not the best-looking guy in the world in the first place, you know. <laughs> you said it, Coach, I didn't. <laughs> I'll tell I'll you tell what, I'm Red. sure he'd be more than happy to shave that head completely he bald if they You're can go on right. and win a state championship. I'll bet he would, too. And all the players on the team. Third and short. Davis back to pass, and he has oh. a man, Mason, but it's in and out of his hands, and it falls incomplete. It'll bring up fourth down. They would have had the first down yardage. He okay. also had Casey Coyne underneath for a shorter pattern that would have gotten the first down as well. But uh, the well, Big Red's you. showing you that their offense he is had working. Them both open. That's right. And the ball is well delivered. You can see he's got plenty of time to throw. And right there, the ball is, uh, you know, right in Mason's hands. He's just not able to handle it right there. Falls incomplete. 
So it's going to bring up a fourth and about two for Belair, and they're in punt formation. Coin back to kick the ball away, and a good, strong kick. It'll be Rhodes fielding it at the 35, breaks one tackle. He can't break the second. Big number 72 comes down and puts the finishing touches. That's Jason Dowling. Dowling. Howling Dowling. Six foot, 175 pound junior. We take a look at Jason again here making the play. Number 42 also down there in good shape. That's Sean Valoric. He's got the first shot at him right there and misses. But number 72, Dowling is there to make the hit. Good coverage by the special teams of Valer. 10.52 to go, first half of play. The Fighting Irish with the football at their own 35-yard line, their second possession of the night. Their first one really couldn't get anything generated except for a couple of pretty good runs, and then they were shut down by the Big Reds. Option, Howell down the line, has some running room, and he'll be close to a first down as he spins across the tacklers. Look like Scott Pitts, who used him as a little bit of a rolling log to roll across and try to get closer to the first down, but he'll be short by about a yard, Coach. Just a little, little option right here. And I'll tell you, Belair has nine people up on the line of scrimmage, and uh, have the they have the pitch covered, but right there they have nobody on the uh, the keep, and the quarterback does a good job of moving the ball up for uh, close to a first down. It'll be second and about one. Look at Belair's defense, Bill. They've got nine Double. people really close to the line of scrimmage. Double tight end formation. Hand off to Burton straight ahead. He's stacked up at the line of scrimmage, but he'll have enough to get the first down. Good tackling by the Big Reds up front, and as you mentioned, everybody up. But it doesn't look like they respect the uh, Ursuline passing game. They, it's almost really? as if it doesn't exist. That's right, and, and every once in a while, uh, you'll watch, they'll bring their safety right up over the nose of the center. Here's the replay. They're trying to, to trap out there for Burton. And number 68, that's Farmer, does, or I'm sorry, that's not Farmer, but Josh Weber does a good job of getting to the ball carrier, holding him for a very short gain, but not until Burton gets enough yardage for the first down. First and 10 from about the 45 and a half yard line. Pitch to Stargill on his feet, breaking tackles into the secondary and a shoestring save. And that's number 28 coming up with the play for the Big Reds. Jeremiah Johnson. Jeremiah Johnson, we called his name earlier, making a tackle in the defensive secondary. But Stargill very close to breaking that one as he only makes maybe his second or third carry of the game. And for the first time tonight, Ursuline into Big Reds territory. I tell you, made a nice cut right here. Had plenty of room to run. Found a little crack in uh, that defense of Belair. Was able to cut it inside and then cut it across the grain. I tell you, he's really a nice runner. Has great vision. I formation. And it's quarterback draw again with Howell. He'll keep it and pick up about three on the play. And that's the second time he has done that tonight. So that is, uh, looks like it's one of their favorite plays. That was the first play they ran on, uh, on when they got the ball offensively. Just a little quarterback counter, a fake off of the pitch, and then coming back. And that was Rich Mamie, the inside linebacker, number 35 on the tackle. Here's a replay, fake pitch. And all they're doing is trying to open a little seam in there, but Mamie stays home, does a good job, and holds that to a short gain of about three. It'll bring up second and about seven. Hand off. Straight ahead and a flag on the play. And I being tell you, shoved back. thrown in there where you usually get a holding call, so we'll see what the call is going to be here. Rashad Chambers on the carry, and with the Ursuline lineman walking back as far as they are, it looks like it will be holding. a hold against yes, Youngstown, Youngstown Ursuline. Ursuline. Very vocal, big Reds crowd on hand, Coach. I tell you, it sure is. They've got their cowbells, their air horns, and everything else that they could bring out of Belair to, to support this team here tonight, and they're really fired up about the ball game. Great thing uh, about the OVAC and its schools, uh, once a school either doesn't make the playoffs or maybe eliminated from the playoffs, it seems like the entire Valley really starts to rally around right. the other schools yeah. that are remaining in the postseason. Last year, for example, uh, Barnesville. Sure. Everybody was behind them. It was such a, sure an was. interesting story. And this year, maybe the Big Reds will be that team. Well, you never know. And hopefully, uh, you know, they'll be able to come out of this with a win and keep on rolling. Howell, double fake, looks downfield, has a couple of guys open, but he just can't find them. Intended receiver number 42, Andre Jones. Here it is from ground level, Jones, Bill. And, and what they're trying to do is just flood a zone over here. They've got three receivers, fullback, wingback shot put at the, the football. End. And right there, just 
falls harmlessly incomplete. Adrian Jones, uh, the intended receiver, number 42, and from the two uh, passing attempts that Howell has made, just does not look comfortable throwing the football. I think he'd rather keep it on the ground right. and, and not even really mess around with putting it upstairs. I think so, and uh, you know, I, this offense is not designed to be a, a running or a passing offense by any stretch of the imagination. They really want to run the football. Double wing, Rhodes to the near side. Howell looks downfield, and he has a man, and it's dropped. But I'll tell you, give credit Tuttle. to number two. That's Jason Tuttle. He was there Good and coverage. probably just, you know, forced the uh, receiver to take his eye off the ball uh, prematurely. That's Mark Angel, number seven, the re, uh, uh, intended receiver here. Here it is on a rollout. Has plenty of time to throw. And as you can see, it's not a picture-perfect passer, but... Uh, good defensive coverage by number two there, Jason Tuttle, and forces Ursuline into a punting situation. Back deep. Scott Coyne standing at his 10-yard line. Bad snap ball gets away, and the rush is on, but the kick is away. Now the Big Reds will wait and see what happens with the roll, and Valoric fields it at the 25-yard line and pays for his decision. That's a tough one to make, but he makes it at the 25-yard line. It'll be first and 10. Big Reds from their own 25 when we come back right after this. Experience a Christmas gathering at Imperial Plaza in Bel Air. Select that perfect gift for everyone on your holiday list. Choose from many one-of-a-kind Imperial glass pieces, beautiful handmade quilts, baskets, fine arts, and antiques. Stroll through the coal and glass museums and take in a classic movie or live performance in the Capitol Theater. Round out the day with a helicopter ride to see the Festival of Lights. Don't miss a Christmas gathering Saturday and Sunday, November 27th and 28th at Imperial Plaza in the old Imperial Glass Factory in Bel Air. Touchdown Club supports the Lady Reds and the Big Reds 365 days a year in all sports. Go Big Reds! And welcome back to the WTOV9 High School Football Playoff Game of the Week, game number two on Friday night. Everybody got to see Steubenville Central come up a winner over East Knox tonight. The Big Reds against Youngstown Ursland. We are scoreless in the second quarter as Davis is back to pass again, hauled in by Coyne, looks to make a move, and does on Ooh, Jones. Picks up a hit. couple and a late hit. It looks like that'll go against number 24, Vince Burton, the outside linebacker. Coyne holding his left arm, may have taken a shot on the elbow. But he should pick up uh, a first down after the penalty. What? I tell you, what a great catch this is. I'll tell you, there's, this ball is well thrown, real tight spiral. But watch the hands right there by Coyne. Great catch. Now watch him after, the, after he catches the ball. Makes a nice move to the outside. And here comes Burton with a late hit. Oh, Kept that's in not with, even close. Came in with the hat. Uh, let's hope Scott that, Coyne's OK. He's working on his left arm. The okay, have 15 yards on to the end of, that, end of that play. Here it is again. There's another good Ground look. level. What a nice catch. Great soft hands by Coyne. Nice move right here. And right there, it was a late. May have gotten it jammed underneath them when the late yeah. hit came in. First and 10 for the Big Reds at their own 45. Pitts on his horse and out across and close to a first down. He's all the way into uh, Ursuline territory, down at about the 45, depending on where they mark it. He may have the first down. Uh, looks like the chain gang is spotted at the 44. He may have it. Right there, you'll see Pitts. He's going to bounce this to the outside. Good movement right there. And nice, nice job by Pitts moving to the outside. But it's going to be for nothing because they're going to bring it back. There's going to be a holding call against Belair. So it's going to be a 10-yard uh, a penalty from the spot of the foul. Checking into the ball game, number 42 for the Big Reds. That's Sean Valoric. He checks in, and he will split to the near side. Mason will go to the far side. Pitts It'll be a first Casey. and 17, Bill. Pitts and Casey Coyne in a split back formation with Scott Coyne as a wing back as Davis drops and looks across the middle for Pitts. He has him, and he's out to the 45 back about a yard short of the original line of scrimmage, so we'll bring up second down and about 11. Okay, Davis does such a good job, you know, not only looking for his first receiver and his secondary receiver, but but then, look, he's, he's, he's picking out the third receiver right here. Does, you know, for a sophomore, you know, that's really, really shows a lot of composure and a lot of confidence and, and just, you know, great, great determination on, on his part to get the job done. And he has really come along 
and he's going to be an outstanding quarterback in the next couple of years. 15-year-old sophomore, six foot, 155 pounds. He's going to fill out a little bit, but he's got a gun. And out to the outside, and that time, Coyne can't hang on to it. I'll tell you what, Coach, there is a lot of mustard on that uh, football. Yes, sir. He has really got something behind each and every pass. But you know, last week against uh, Morton's Fair, I saw him a couple times where he really had a nice touch where he was able mm -hmm. to just drop the ball in there. But, you know, right here, he's, uh, you know, he's, he's throwing the ball really well that time, a little behind Coyne, and Coyne just not able to handle it. He'll bring up third and about 11, maybe closer to 12. Five fifty to go, second quarter of action. Mason to the near side this time. Valoric to the far side. Shotgun formation for Davis. Third and 12. Davis back to pass, steps up in the pocket. Ooh. He sandwiched, ball comes loose, recovered. And they're gonna call him down. They call him down or they call it incomplete. They're they gonna, call, call they're gonna mark him down. Well, he, you, was he was not in, down. He, he was, was still near up. to being down. And that lineman had, um, we'll have to take a look at it and see exactly who recovered that football, but he could have run for a few more yards. I think it was Bohas, number 53. There he is right here. He begins to scramble. And he runs into a defender right here. And the ball pops out. I mean, he is he not is down. Up. He's not even close to down. He took a pretty good shot and... Uh, Right there, number 68 will be on the uh, recovery for Belair. That's uh, Josh, Josh Weber. Well, Coins kick is going to roll dead uh, inside the 30 at about the uh, 28, 29 yard line. So uh, Ursula will have it there. We'll come back, and that's where they'll have it. First and 10 with 5.08 to go in the first half of play. Hey, Big Reds, the moms are behind you all the way. Bring home a victory from the Big Red football moms. Congratulations, Beller Big Reds. Good luck in the playoffs. A special wish to Scott and Casey Coyne and all other area Nefs boys from all of us at the Nefs American Legion Post 77. And welcome back to the game of the week. Bel Air and Ursuline, and it's Stargill looking to make some moves, looking to make something happen, and he does for about five yards before he is stacked up by a number of Big Reds defenders. Looks like Jeremiah Johnson came up and got a piece of the tackle. He's playing a good ball game right now. Take a look at it again, Coach. Last play off the right side. And uh, right there you can see Belair's defensive people are down on their, their knees. They have to stay up on their feet, try to make a little more penetration. And number 16 for Belair does a great job. J.R. Hall, inside linebacker, holding that to a gain of about six. Everybody up in the box. Handoff to Burton, straight ahead, power running. He has a couple. He'll be close to a first down. I think he's going to be sure to bring up a third down and about a yard, Coach. Burton is their second leading rusher behind Stargell. Uh, Stargell rushed for about 850 yards this year. Burton uh, somewhere around 600 yards. Uh, so that tandem has accounted for about 1,400 yards of uh, offense this past year. Third down ball spotted at your own 39-yard line. Have everybody up in the box looking for the run? Will play, act, play action pass to the tight no, end? No, I don't think so. I think they're going to keep it on the ground. This, this kid is not a passer. Hand off to Burton, and he will be close to a first down. Well, he got it over the 40, so, so he's yeah. going to have a first down, and he got it basically on second effort. He did a great job. Uh, he was initially stopped on his side of the 40, but uh, on second effort was able to get it over the 40-yard line, so it'll be a first down for uh, Ursuline at their own 41-yard line. Take a look at it here again, Coach. Good penetration this time by uh, that Belair defense right there. They're able to stack it up. And uh, you'll see Burton right here stay on his feet and was able to slide to the outside and was able to move in there for the first down. Fumble, ball's loose, but Howell falls on it and he takes it down at the 35-yard line. I think what they were trying to do is run the option and uh, with a fake to the fullback uh, on the outside belly play and uh, just got a little tied up in here and the ball pops loose. And right here, Howell has uh, the uh, the presence of mind to just fall on it uh, instead of turning it over, so it'll be second and 15 from the 35. Blair doing a good job of, of holding this explosive uh, running offense, uh, you know, pretty well in check. There hasn't been a, a big, big run by any of those backs from Ursuline so far in this first half. Stargill bouncing to the outside and. 
and he still is contained. Finally taken down, and we have a late uh, flag coming in. Maybe a late hit called on the Bel Air Big Reds. And I tell you, that's really going to hurt because they held him to a five-yard gain, and they're going to attack 15 on to this uh, against Belair. Somebody came in late and uh, put a hit on Stargell, and uh, they're going to add 15 yards onto this. Here it is right here, and uh, just a blast play over the right side. Right here, number 53, Bohas, makes good penetration but misses. 35 uh, misses, that's uh, Hall and Ermami. And right there, he's down for, and then Mamie comes in and, and puts a little late hit on him. So it's going to give Ursuline a first down at Belair's 45-yard line. Two minutes and 30 seconds to go. The clock is rolling here in the first half. Stargill goes in motion. Pitch back to uh, Chambers, and he is on his feet and almost down to another first down at the 35-yard line. He'll be short by about a half a yard. The clock continues to roll, and I do not believe anyone has taken a timeout yet, Coach, so uh, three to spend for the Fighting Irish. There's the pitch sweep. Fullback lead, guard leads. Good kick out block there by number 24, Burton. And uh, number 22, that's uh, Rashad Chambers, is able to take it up in there for a gain of nine, bring up second and one. Normally, this would be a good down for some play action, but uh, being that Ursuline is not a real good passing team, I doubt whether we'll see that. Rhodes to the far side. Chambers again looking to cut it back. He'll have the first down at about the 33-yard line, so they will move the chains. They stop the clock with 1.42 to go in the half. Number 84 for uh, Belair did a good job in there. That's Josh Ost Ostrander. And right there, you'll see also number 77 uh, for Belair. Dusty Holt doing a good job of catching that from behind. And, and so we have... right now, Arsenal will spend a timeout with 1.42 left to go in this uh, first half. While they talk it over, we we will take a break. While they talk it over, you can head to the kitchen, get a snack, come on back. It's a good one. Nothing, nothing. Late in the first. <laughs> Welcome back to the game of the week. It's a good one. We've got no points on the board right now. The Blair Big Reds versus Youngstown Ursuline. And uh, hi, ladies. Hi. They're from the marching band here. Excited to be here for the first time at the playoff? Yeah. Of course they are. They're getting ready for halftime. Yes. Yeah. yeah. What can we expect <laughs> from you guys? You're great. Yeah. Awesome. 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 Yeah. What's our first tune we should be listening for? Lisa. AD. Lisa, I have a question. <laughs> okay, guys. Now, Lisa, is, are these the same girls that I saw at Wendy's on the way up to the game? Uh, Bill wants to know if you're the same girls he saw at Wendy's before the game. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> we take it back up to you, Bill and Rich. Thanks, and on first down, it was uh, Burton taking in the little shovel pass, a little dump pass over the line of scrimmage, oh, and he'll right. pick up the first pass, and right now we have uh, some officials talking, so there may be a flag on the play, Coach. Here's Howell, and, and he just dumps it right there to Burton, and uh, first completion for, uh, that'll be the first completion for Ursuline. The officials are discussing something. I don't, yet I do see a flag on the other side of the field, so uh, they're, they're discussing it to see what it is. A well, funny thing, Coach, uh, mentioned the, the young ladies that Lisa just talked to, the flag girls from the marching band, and we were in East Liverpool stopping off to get something mm -hmm. to eat at Wendy's, and they came running out of the restaurant to make sure that we got them on TV tonight. So we have taken care of our obligation. Well, that's great. I'll tell you, illegal receiver downfield for uh, Ursuline, so that's going to negate that gain by Burton on a pass from Howell. They'll bring it back and uh, penalize that. Uh, I think it's a 15-yard penalty. A good break for the Big Reds with 134 to go in the nope. first half. It's a five-yard penalty. Every little bit helps, Coach. Sure does, because uh, that ball was down inside the 20 on the completion, so it's going to bring it back uh, to the 38-yard line of uh, Belair with 126 left to go in this uh, this half. It's real, real important for, for Belair to hold here and not let Ursuline get it in. Chambers in the I formation. Fullback is Burton up front. Stargill is in a wing to the near side. Little trap to Stargill. He's got a ru some running room, stays on his feet. It's a little bit of a foot race to the outside with Valoric and Coyne and Stargill. And Stargill's gonna pick up some good yardage. Ran about 50 yards across the field, only picked up uh, a little more than uh, 10 yards. He'll be close to a first down. He's gonna come up short though by about a yard. It's a wing back counter. Here it is right here and they, uh, they let number 77 come in. <laughs> he was unblocked. Uh, and I'm, I'm sure that's not by design. Dusty Holt just over-penetrated a little bit. But right here you see Sean Valoric and uh, Scotty Coyne in on the tackle. 
They hold him short of the first down, so it's going to bring up second and about one. But more important than that, there's only 58 seconds left to go in this first half. And Youngstown just used their second timeout. <laughs> There it is, Coach, the haircut. Somebody had to cut that with a pair of shears or something. It, 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 that couldn't have been by design. Those guys must have all had a shot with a pair of scissors to cut some of that hair for, uh, for well, Coach, on Coach Magistro. Coach, Coach, everyone's excited about the playoffs. The, the flag girls from the band, the marching band, the fans, the team. So maybe when he got that haircut, they were a little bit too excited about it and just lost all control. And That's right. Left them looking like that. Well, somebody lost control. <laughs> Oh, there's Steve Fortunato, a former TV9 personality down on sideline, uh, now working in Youngstown and probably here covering uh, Youngstown Ursula. Steve Fortunato, of course, left TV9 the last day he was there, proposed on air. Stargell looking downfield for the pass, and it'll be picked Ooh. off. Oh, it'll be dropped, but we have a penalty, and Scott Coyne knows it. We're going to pass interference against number three, Scott Coyne. He was covering Rhodes on the play. Chambers looks downfield. He looks downfield looking to pass and uh, or Stargill check that looking to pass and he wasn't even close to uh, Rhodes but Rhodes is already on his backside thanks to uh, Scott Coyne. Okay that's going to hurt uh, that'll be a, I think it'll be a half the distance penalty I, I, I think. Now, that'll be a full full 15 yards. 53 seconds I tell you Belair is in bad shape right now. Person has the ball inside the 15, first and 10, and there's 53 seconds left to go, and they still have a timeout remaining. So they've got a hold right here, Bill. Howell on the quarterback draw, straight up the middle and down at the six-yard line. Clock will continue to move. Youngstown Ursula, one timeout left, and they will spend it right here with 43 seconds to go. It's that play that they've uh, they've run a couple times. They just seal everybody down to the inside, and right here there's Howell on the uh, the keeper back to the uh, side away from the fake, and he's got it down to about the six yard line. So it'll be second and about four, maybe closer to three from about the six. 43 seconds to go in the half, coach. Uh, maybe a little bit anxious on calling that uh, timeout. If that's your, if that's their last one. Well, I tell you, they've got uh, they've got two shots yet at it. Uh, they've got one of the best running backs in the state of Ohio that's being recruited by uh, so many of the uh, Big Ten teams: Ohio State, Michigan, Penn State, uh, Stargell. Uh, they certainly are not a throwing team by any stretch of the imagination. So, you know, I, I look for Stargell to get the ball somehow, either on the pitch sweep uh, or on uh, some type of option play with Howell. Uh, you know, we'll see what uh, what Coach Angel decides to do right here. But uh, if they do run the ball on this on this down and are not able to convert, then they've got to line up real, real quick and find some way to kill the clock uh, so that it'll set them up for a field goal at least. Second down and four. They can pick up a first down at the two-yard line. Sargell in the eye. Hand off to Burton straight ahead. He's stacked up at the five-yard line. The clock continues to run. Not even close to picking up the first down. They're going to have to hurry up and do something here. Bel Air taking the their clock. time getting off the, uh, the ground. They set it up. They will get another snap with 25 seconds to go or so. Clock rolling, and there was motion. Someone someone did something wrong, but the only thing that happened for the right reasons was Bel Air came up with a sack. Burton went in motion, but I thought I saw one of the interior linemen go as well. Clock down inside of, of 10 seconds and just throwing it's it out of late. bounds. That's fourth and down. And no one's fourth down. No one's in the area where uh, Howell was throwing. Bel Air Big Reds hold, and they will get the football back in a crazy final 30 seconds of the first half of play. Okay, they needed to do that on, on third down, not on fourth down. They, they try to stop, they stop the clock on fourth down. Take a look at the, the third we'll down play. We'll see what play. the call is here first by the official uh, on what the play. Here's the third down play, and right here is where they should have been grounding the ball to stop the clock. And uh, it certainly looked like there was motion right here, but good penetration. 
by that Belair defense holds it to you know a, a loss and then here's fourth down Howell throws the ball away but it's fourth down and that, that doesn't do any good that's just a situation where you know if you go over to the sideline you're going to spend that time out right. on, at before second down as a coach I would you have to make sure Absolutely. that your kids know exactly what down it is and exactly sure. what they are to do if the play that's that you right. call doesn't work that was just very very poor management of the of the clock uh, by Youngstown Ursuline and uh, Belair did a good job of playing very solid defense down there, so they're, they're, they're in good shape right now going into the locker room at halftime. Davis takes the knee. The clock rolls inside of five seconds. We will go to the half. Youngstown, Ursula, nothing. Bel Air, Big Reds, nothing. Nothing has been decided. Should be one heck of a second half of football here from Austin Town Fitch Stadium. The game of the week, and that's exactly what it is here on this Saturday night between these two teams in the first round of the playoffs. We'll head to the halftime break, and then we'll come back with the Bel Air Big Reds marching band right after this. Our score, after one half of play, Ursula nothing, Bel Air nothing. We'll be back with more after this. Leva's Quality Jewelry, all wholesale prices. We've moved around the corner to a larger location to serve you better. Guaranteed lowest prices in the valley, shop Leva's and compare. Rat and Cheese Photography, the Ohio Valley's leading senior photography studio, would like to congratulate their Bel Air Big Reds on their first ever playoff appearance. Go Big Reds! Bachnick Funeral Home in Bel Air, Shadyside, and Powhatan Point wants to congratulate the Big Reds on a great season and wishes them and Captain Sean Valorek the best of luck in tonight's playoff game. Introducing. All right, we're at halftime. Uh, Big Red's doing a great feat out there, but we've got no points on the board. How was that first half, Coach? Well, we're real pleased. Uh, offensively, we uh, haven't been able to establish a running game, and uh, somehow we've got to try to do that. Defensively, I couldn't be more proud of our defense. So I think it's, right now we'll go in and try to see what we can do for our running game, because once we get our running game going, that'll open up our passing game also. And defensively, we got to keep doing the same things we have been doing the first half. So the plan of attack is just strengthen our offense a little bit going in the second half. Right. I'm asking why you got that haircut. Get the running game going and uh, <laughs> talk about a few things. We had a couple receivers open. We didn't get have enough time to throw the ball, so we got to get our offensive line in gear. But you got to admit the enthusiasm's high. First time in the playoffs, these boys are set, right? They've done a great job. They're, for young kids, I'm, I'm just real pleased, and uh, hopefully the second half will put some points on board. All right. Thank you very much, Coach Andristo. Heading back to the locker room, getting set for a second half here. We're heading into halftime. As you can see, the big red uh, marching band out there performing their hearts out.
right now we're going to take a timeout. It's Bel Air Big Reds finish up our score at halftime. Youngstown Ursula nothing, Bel Air nothing. We'll be back with the second half right after this. Experience a Christmas gathering at Imperial Plaza in Bel Air. Select that perfect gift for everyone on your holiday list. Choose from many one-of-a-kind Imperial glass pieces, beautiful handmade quilts, baskets, fine arts, and antiques. Stroll through the coal and glass museums and take in a classic movie or live performance in the Capitol Theater. Round out the day with a helicopter ride to see the Festival of Lights. Don't miss a Christmas gathering Saturday and Sunday, November 27th and 28th at Imperial Plaza in the old Imperial Glass Factory in Bel Air. Touchdown Club supports the Lady Reds and the Big Reds 365 days a year in all sports. Go Big Reds! And welcome back to the second half of action. Coach, a great performance by the Bel Air Big Reds marching band, and we are ready for more football action. Second half, and it'll be the Big Reds kicking off deep for the Youngstown Ursuline Fighting Irish, number 20, Stargill, and he is a dangerous return man. Good kick, though, from Mason as it drives the ball all Whoa. the way into the end zone and out. So hey, that no was eight yards into the, the end ball. zone. What a great kick that time by Farmer. And boy, I tell you, that's a good way for him to start because Ursuline is going to be going into the wind, and uh, Belair will have advantage, will have the wind advantage here in the third quarter, and uh, hopefully they'll be able to take advantage of that, that win. I tell you, it was an excellent first half, a real defensive struggle. Both teams played very, very well. Both teams had uh, opportunities to score, but uh, neither one was successful. Belair's uh, first drive took them down inside the 25 before a turnover. Then the half ended with Ursuline inside the 15-yard line of uh, Belair. And their passing game, which is non-existent, really hurt them at the end of the half. Right now it's Stargill straight ahead. He'll be close to first down yardage, maybe uh, about a yard or two short. But, uh, Coach, that could be a factor late in the game. If it's close and uh, Ursula needs to throw the football, they haven't shown anyone tonight that they can do it. That's right. And I'll tell you, this guy right here is really a very, very good runner. And if uh, I was the coach of Ursula, I would, I would put a saddle on his kid's back and I would ride him for the rest of this half. I mean, he, he can really gain some yard. Has good speed, good vision, good feet. Is, has the ability to cut very, very well. And uh, we'll see if that's what they're going to do. Second and about two. Double tight end formation again on the option. Howell, he's going to keep. He'll have the first down and out close to the 35-yard line. Scott Pitts comes up and makes a tackle along with number 84. That's uh, Josh Ostrander. Here it is, the fake to the fullback on the outside belly, then, uh, then the keep right here. And you can see Stargell getting in front of Howell, so it's a run all the way. And he's able to get it up near the... Uh, 35-yard line, and that will put uh, Ursuline into a first and 10 situation from their own 35. I formation in the backfield. Burton, the fullback. Stargill, the tailback. And it'll be Stargill looking to get to the corner, and he'll be swarmed under, coming up quickly and making the play number seven, along with number 16. That's that number is J.R. Hall and Keith Pitts. That's number 66, Chad Farmer, the defensive end that made good penetration there, uh, Bill. I, 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 I think that you, you thought it was 16, but it's 66. Watch it right here. There it is, making good penetration. He's the first one on the hit along with number seven for uh, uh, Belair. That's Keith Pitts and uh, trying to run a little tailback counter that time that just did not develop at all for Ursula, and they lost about four, so it'll bring up second and 14. Stargell again. Flag on the play in the area where holding would be called. Stargell still on his feet, forced out of bounds at the 40-yard line, but this one may come back as there's a flag on the play, and it looks like from the preliminary indications that it will be a holding penalty against Ursuline. We'll see what the preliminary signal is here by the referee. It is holding on Ursuline. It was a nice run. It's going to be brought back. We'll see if we can pick up where the holding is. It's really hard to say, but I'll tell you, he does a good job, has great speed right there, breaks the tackle of number 44. That's Scott Pitts, and uh, Stargell does a good job. Here it is from another angle, and it might be right there on number 55, uh, who was blocking uh, Dusty Holt. And number 55 is Tim Wirtz, uh, the offensive center for uh, Ursuline. So it takes it back, and that's a, that's a penalty from the spot of the foul and uh, not from the line of scrimmage. Second and 22. Right, 
Howell, not a great passing quarterback. He draw won't try play. it. Little draw play to Stargell. And he is taken down by a host of big reds. And we'll see who's on the bottom of this pile, the last one to get up right there. Uh, Number 16. That's uh, Holt, I believe. It's J.R. Hall. Number 16. He's an inside linebacker. We'll see it on a replay. Here it is right here. And here's Stargell trying to get to the outside. He's forced back to the inside. And you can see uh, Hall is on the ground right there. But uh, a little fortunate, leg whip. A little fortunate <laughs> enough right there to give him a little leg whip and bring him down. <laughs> That's right. He's using his whole body to make the tackle. Third down and long for Ursuline. Third and 17. Ball at the 28-yard line. How back to pass. Looks downfield. He has two receivers in the same spot. And it'll be short. A first down yardage. So the Big Reds have held defensively. And it looks like Ursuline will kick the ball away. And that was completed to number seven. That's Mark Ang Angel coming, Angel coming from the backside. Here is uh, also Burton is in the pattern. The ball is completed to number seven running a crossing pattern. But it's well short of the first down. It'll bring up fourth and about eight. Back deep for the Big Reds is number three, Scott Coyne. Doing the punting is Bill Rhodes for Ursuline. Good snap. Wobbly kick. It'll bounce at the 45, and it takes a Big Reds bounce all the way back inside of Ursuline territory. Picked up by Bel Air, who picked the football up. Number two, picking up the football for Jason Bel Air. Tuttle. Jason Tuttle. And he may have gained an extra yard, but a dangerous play by Tuttle. But it works out because the Big Reds have great field position. But well, uh, they certainly do, Bill. That wasn't a very good punt because the ball rolled backward. And uh, Jason Tuttle picked it up at about his own 40, about uh, Ursuline's 47-yard line and, and moved it up to about the 46. So uh, Belair's in good field position right here, first and 10, their first possession of the second half. Play action pass, great play action fake by Davis. Looks down the sideline, looks for Coin, and is broken up, incomplete. Well, I'll tell you, he had two receivers open short. Uh, he had number four wide open, or I'm sorry, number seven wide open. I'm sorry, number 40, that was uh, uh, Coin, Coin coming out of the backfield. Here it is right here, he had him wide open, decided to go deep with the ball, looking for uh, Scotty Coin and Coin was pretty well covered, and the ball was knocked incomplete. Great play action fake, though, from Davis. He had Burton in the backfield, and Burton went right with the with the uh, ball carrier. He couldn't have been more than two feet away from Davis, but the fake was so good that it gave Jose Davis plenty of time to roll out and look yeah, he's, downfield. He's, a, he's an excellent ball handler. Second and ten, a missile across the middle, a laser beam. Coin hang, coin can't hang on as it goes through his hands at the 35-yard line. It'll bring up third and long for the Big Reds. He's looking for coin, and coin is running a little slip-in pattern right here, and he slips as he's running the slip-in, and he's on his knees as, as the ball is delivered, and uh, coin just not able to hang on to it from that position. So it'll bring up third and ten from the 47-yard line of Youngstown Ursuline. Slot formation on the near side for the Big Reds. Third and 10, ball at the Ursuline 47-yard line. Davis back to pass. Steps up in the pocket, looks across the middle, has a man, and it's dropped at the 31-yard line. So the Big Reds, we have a flag on the play. We'll have to wait and see exactly what happens with the penalty, but uh, the Big Reds 0 for 3 in three straight passing attempts from the 47. That's number five, John Ferrier. The ball delivered right on target, but he wasn't able to hang on to it. There, there is a uh, flag. Belair, or, uh, Young, Ursuline brings in an extra defensive back, and they're finding the seams in that uh, that zone defense, but uh, Ferrier just not able to hold on to the ball right there, and it falls incomplete. There was a holding penalty against Belair. It was declined, so it'll put him into a fourth and 10 situation. Rhodes and Stargell back at the 10-yard line. Coin to do the kicking, kind of waiting, 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 and he's going to hold on to it, kick the ball away, and a good kick inside the five-yard line. It'll go into the end zone and be a touchback, but you could see Scott Coin waiting to see if Ursula would clear out and give him enough room to take a shot at the first down. They didn't clear out far enough. He kicks it away. We take a break. Nothing, nothing with 7.45 to go in the third. Hey, Big Reds. The moms are behind you all the way. Bring home a victory from the Big Red Football Moms. 
Congratulations, Bell or Big Reds. Good luck in the playoffs. A special wish to Scott and Casey Coyne and all other area Nefs boys from all of us at the Nefs American Legion Post 77. The Belmont Career Center congratulates the Bel Air Big Reds on a great season and wishes them success in the Division III Region 9 playoffs. Belmont Harrison Vocational School District serves Bel Air, as well as all of Belmont and Harrison County School Districts. The vocational training received at the Career Center has benefited students, employers, and communities for over 20 years. We wish success to the Bel Air football team, especially to all our Career Center students, loyal to the Big Reds. Bring home another victory. Go Big Red! Third quarter action, nothing, nothing ball game. It has not lacked for excitement, even though we don't have any scores on the board, Coach. Right now, Youngstown Ursuline first and 10 with 7.45 to go in the third quarter of play. Bill, look at this defense Belair has up there. Like I said before, they've got nine, 10 guys within five, seven yards of the line of scrimmage just daring Ursuline to put the ball up. Well, Firstland ran a play-action pass and got someone into the secondary. Uh, a lot of room out there to work with, but they the danger, just can't throw the football. The danger of that is you you break know, if the, Stargell you break, is able yeah. to pop that. No know, one's back there to grab that, him. That's right. And uh, well, I'll tell you, he gets into that secondary. He could go the distance. So far, the defense has worked for the Big Reds. They have had all of the answers defensively against Stargell, and he has the football again, this time bouncing to the outside there. A flag. Uh, I don't know about this call. About That's this. on number 35. I know they're going to call it a, a face mask on Rich Mamie, but I tell you, I'd like to see that again because I read I read the lips. I don't know if you, when you watch this, you read the lips of the official when he came over to talk to the head referee, and he says he pulled the back of his helmet. They can well, call we'll that a face right. mask. I, I, I don't think so. But that's exactly what he yep. said. I, he wa you walk by him. There it is right here from this angle. We may be able to see it right here, but I'm not even sure whether he had the back of his helmet or not. But that's exactly what that official uh, well, now that the hurts. referee. That really hurts right there. It was a great defensive play by the right side of that Billard defense. But as, anyway, it's first and 10 from the 40 for Youngstown. Hand off to Stargill. I think we're going to have a motion penalty. I think Burton may have jumped the fullback That's a little Rashad, bit early. Rashad Chambers at the tailback position, number 22. They are going to bring it back. Now my question is, even if he did have the back of the helmet, that uh, that's not a face mask penalty. Not, a, not according to the high school rules, I don't think. But that is exactly what he said to the referee, and I'm just trying to figure out how you would call a face mask grabbing the back of the helmet. That's an illegal procedure penalty or a motion penalty against uh, Youngstown Ursuline, so evidently somebody was moving prior to the snap in that offensive backfield. Bring up first and 15 after the five-yard penalty. Ball spotted on the 35-yard line. They credit it officially at the 36, but it is just over the 35. Wing formation. Angel goes in motion to the near side. Howell's going to keep. He's on a bootleg, and he's looking to run the football. Still on his feet. Bounces to the outside, taken down at the 45. A good play there by number two, Jason Tuttle. He came over, worked off of the block, threw his body down in front of the legs of Howell, and took him down at the 45 after about a 10-yard game. Called second down and five. This is run all the way. A little fake to Stargell going back the other way, but it's, uh, it's, it's a run all the way, a little bootleg action, and... Uh, Good yardage, good positive yardage by Howell on that play. Will bring up a second and about five. Gain of 10. Angel in the wing to the near side. He goes in motion. Chambers is your tailback. Hand off to Chambers straight ahead. He'll have the first down by about a half a yard. First and 10 inside Big Red's territory. Rashad Chambers, number 22, in there uh, in, in relief of uh, Stargell. Chambers is a 6'2", 180-pound senior. This is just a blast play over the right side with the fullback leading, and he does a fairly good job of holding on to that inside linebacker. He had him in a bear hug, and uh, that was number 16 for uh, Belair J.R. Hall, the left inside linebacker. 6'3", six, six, a lineman for Belair. They've got nine people right up on the line of scrimmage. Hand off to Burton straight ahead. He cracks into the secondary and down close to the 40-yard line. He'll be close to a first down, about a yard short. So uh, anytime you can get second and one or second and a yard and a half, you could be in business. 
Here's Burton on the inside. It's a little trap play. Number 51 pulling and trapping. As you can see right there, a good trap block by number 51. Uh, that's Blaze Karlovic, uh, right guard for Youngstown Ursuline. Nothing fancy by Ursuline, just a blast play, the pitch, pitch sweep, and uh, the fullback in, on the trap and off tackle. There's the Chambers blast play. again. A big man tries to cut to the outside, loses his footing, and goes down at the 40, so no gain on the play. And fortunate because he would have had some room to run. Nick Marinelli, uh, one of the... Uh, Outside linebackers was there ready to make the hit, but uh, here you see it right here. He's got a blocker on him, and he's not coming off that block real, real well. And right there, Chambers just slips and falls, so it's going to bring up a third and about two. It's a big down right here for Bel Air. Burton and Stargill split in the backfield. Angel in motion, hand off to Burton straight ahead, and he will have the first down. Yeah, you got a good push in there by number 62 uh, for uh, Youngstown Ursuline. That's Jeff Bryan, one of the offensive tackles, uh, was able to get his man uh, moving backwards, and I think that they will have the first down. I'll tell you, they didn't give him the spot that I thought that they would give him. They're going to measure this, and it is going to be close. If they don't make it, is it four down territory for Ursuline? Well, I... It's awful early to go for it. There's 4.20 left to go in the third quarter. Uh, Ursuline's defense is playing pretty good right here, so uh, yeah, it doesn't make any they difference. We're not going to have to worry about it because they've got the first down. Well, they're, they keep looking at it. There you go. There's the signal. <laughs> but had they not made it, uh, I don't know what uh, what Coach Angel from Ursuline would have done. But, uh, you know, uh, Central was faced with a similar situation last mm -hmm. night uh, at Dover, and they went for it, didn't make it. And uh, at that point, East Knox uh, started to mount a little bit of drive, uh, had to throw the ball, and were somewhat unsuccessful. A couple uh, interference calls made during that period of time, and it was a little scary toward the end of the ball game last night. Official timeout down on the field. They, the marker that they use on the chain came off, so they had to retrieve that, so a little bit of a delay there. Right now, first and 10, ball on the Bel Air 39-yard line. Four minutes to go in the third quarter of a scoreless ball game between Ursuline and Bel Air. Stargell to the outside, and he is strung out down the line. Still manages to pick up a few yards. We call it second down and seven for Ursuline. Ted Belair did a good job of stringing that out, making uh, Stargell run east and west instead of north and south. And uh, got to make a little better penetration uh, on this. They have to come up and support this a little bit quicker. Right there, you can see number two doing a pretty good job, Jason Tuttle. And... Uh, Number 44, Pitts comes over to push Stargell out of bounds after a gain of about five, and, and it looked like he wasn't going to gain too much on that, but did get five, bring up second and five. Beller's got to do a much better job on first down. They can't give up five yards on first down. There's that Powell, play again. Quarterback keeper, and on the little quarterback draw, he'll be close to another first down for Youngstown Ursuline, and right now the Fighting Irish just grinding this one out. And that's their style of ball. That's that's the way they like to play it. They like to just beat on you with those big offensive linemen. Here's the replay from ground level fake. And, uh, you know, right there, he just looks for a, for a crack, an opening somewhere. When he finds it, he just steps up in it. And right there, he got enough for the first down. So it's first and 10 from about the 30, uh, about the 28-yard line. Sargent on the pitch. Bouncing to the outside, Good and a job. great play by Sean Valor. Strung it out and strong enough to take him down from the shoulder pads. A great play by Valor, Coach. I tell you, real good job. Sean played off the block very, very well, was able to string it out, and he has really good speed and was able to get to the corner right there and make the tackle on a very, very elusive runner, uh, Stargell. No gain. Second and ten. Stargell checks out. The bigger Chambers checks into the ball game for the Fighting Irish. We'll see if Chambers runs right at him, either off the right or the left side. Second down and ten from the 28. Chambers on the handoff, straight ahead, and someone put a leg out in the pile and tripped him up after about a five-yard gain. So it'll be third and five for the Fighting Irish. Okay. They gave him the bounce right there. <laughs> Uh, here it is on a replay. 
He tripped you'll over see, his own man. You'll, you'll see he where he went Burton. down. Yeah, you'll see where he went down and where they spot the ball. They probably should be spotted back about another yard or so. Third, down third here. and five. This is a big down. This is four down territory. Chambers in the eye formation. And we have motion against Ursuline. A mental breakdown on the line of scrimmage by the tight end, number 84. Robert Marino. And Robert probably wondering when he was going to get involved in the game. Wanted to make sure we mention him another time. But uh, a costly penalty there. But that uh, sure does down. hurt. It's not third and ten instead of third and five. And that changes the whole complexion for Ursuline. They're not a, a good long yardage uh, situation uh, team. They would much rather have it uh, third and short instead of third and long. But they still have the uh, they still have two downs to make those 10 yards. So we'll see what they do here on third down and then come back on fourth down. Chambers in the eye. Burton up front as the fullback. It's going to be Howell rolling out, looking to pass, and oh, it almost is completed, but it is almost intercepted. intercepted. All in the same play. The intended receiver is Adrian Jones. He's the tight end. And uh, it looked like, I believe that was number two Tuttle back there that had a shot at making the uh, interception. You're exactly right, Bill. Here it is right here. You can see that the ball is going to be tipped, and number two standing back there is the one that almost made the interception. And real, real good coverage by number 35. That's Rick Rich Mamie, the inside linebacker. We will bring up fourth and ten. We talked about it earlier when they passed, if it would suck in the Big Reds, but the Big Reds have done well every time they've tried to throw the ball. Sure have. They haven't left their... Uh, their intended or key receivers that they have to cover. They got Stargell in a wing going in motion. They've got three quick receivers that way. We'll see what he's going to do. Fourth and ten. Howell tucks it away. Forget about it. He'll be stopped. The Big Reds hold a big defensive stand. Youngstown Ursuline took almost the entire quarter off of the clock. The clock stops at 134, but they come up with a big goose egg. The Bel Air Big Reds have held and they'll get the football back. Here it is on a replay. They they motion into trips and they're sprinting that way with Burnett in front of Howell right here. And here he's uh, he's turning up field. He's looking for a receiver. This is a, a good coverage sack because he sees no one open and good pursuit by that Belair Big Reds defense. They get to him real, real quick. And that's number 84, the first on the hit, Josh Ostrander. Hand off to Casey Coyne straight ahead for about three. Good solid inside running that time by Casey Coyne and big the Big Reds got to got to get their their running game untracked here. They haven't uh, run the ball well at all throughout the course of this ball game. Of course they haven't really had to because they've had people open and uh, been several drop passes. Davis has been on target almost every time all evening. Sean Vlork checks into the ball game. He splits to the near side. And he's got blazing speed, too, Scott, Bill. Scott Coyne to the far side. Eye formation in the backfield for Davis. Quick drop. Looks for Coyne on the slant. Has it across the 40 for the first down as the clock rolls inside of 40 seconds. Nice, quick, crisp little play. Find the that, scene. That, uh... That is so hard to stop if it's if it's uh, run properly and read properly. And right there, you can see how patient Davis is. He waits until Coyne is able to clear that underneath coverage, and then he delivers a strike as he's between the two defenders. Coyne will split to the far side again. Number seven, Keith Pitts split to this side. Eye formation with Coyne and Pitts in the backfield. Hand off to Pitts straight ahead. He'll pick up about four on first down. Second down and six, we'll call it for the Big Reds and before the half uh, halftime activities with the Bel Air marching band, Lisa Kick uh, had an opportunity to talk with head coach John Magistro and like you said coach, they want to establish the run a little bit more in the second half, open up the passing lanes and that's what they're trying to do right now. When we come back from a break, it'll be Bel Air football on their own 44 yard line, second and six when we start the fourth quarter play. Still scoreless here at Austin Town Pitch Stadium. WTOV 9's game of the week. It is the Big Reds of Bel Air versus the Fighting Irish of Youngstown Ursuline. Still no points on the board as we head into the fourth. Right now, the coach talking to his team. When we talked to him last time, he said he's going to have to work on the running game. The defense has been very strong. The passes by Jose Davis have been very good, right to their point. And uh, hopefully, we can score some points here as we head into the fourth quarter. Back to you, Bill Rich. Thank you very much, Lisa. On top of everything, as always, down on the sideline, 
All right now, second down and six from the 44. Quick little look to the tight end and hauling it in from Jose Davis for a first down, big number 10. Dusty Kinder. I tell you, a real nice play here. The fake held the linebacker, and then Kinder just found the open area and uh, kept his eye on the ball, and the ball delivered right on the money. Here it is right here. It just freezes number 24, and Kinder finds the open area and gets it into the secondary and then uses that big body of his to move it upfield for a big first down on about the 41-yard line of Youngstown Ursuline. Dusty's so good, Coach, we added an L to his last name. <laughs> Hand off to KC Coin straight ahead. He picks up about three on first down, maybe close to four. So that's, a, I would imagine, if you're a coach Magistro on first down, if you can get three or four yards at a crack, that really helps set up your uh, second down options. Well, I tell you, if you can get four yards on first down, you know, that's considered a win because it puts you into a situation where you only need to get six yards on the next two downs. And, uh, you know, you figure you might, you're, you're able to get three yards per play if you have to, but if you can get four, it's even better. It's going to be a second and six. Davis, quick look on the slant again to coin this time behind him, and the linebackers immediately recognized what they wanted to do. Burton came over quickly. Would have been a short gain, but instead it falls incomplete. It brings up third down. That's probably the first pass that he's thrown tonight, Bill, that it was really off target. It was badly thrown behind the receiver. And, uh, you know, for a sophomore, that's really a good percentage of being on the money. Ferrier checks into the ball game. He'll split to the near side. K Scott Coyne to the far side. Casey Coyne and Scott Pitts split in the backfield. Davis He's under center, third and seven at the Youngstown Ursuline 38. And Davis is just tattooed by Vince Burton, the outside linebacker. And Davis slow to get up, but uh, he gets up and heads to the sideline. But a big play there by the Youngstown Ursuline defense. Burton is the... Uh leading tackler on this uh, Ursuline defense and right there he comes from the corner on a blitz and beats two blockers and uh, Davis had just had no chance he was looking for coin on a on a real on a on a hitch pattern for the first down but didn't have time to throw coin gets it away ball bounces down at the 20 yard line down to the 15 inside the 15 and down at the 13-yard line. That's where Ursuline will take over first and 10 from their own 14-yard line. Still no score in this game. 10-14 to go in the fourth quarter of play. Let's hope that uh, Belair can, can force Ursuline into a three-and-out situation. Uh, Ursuline held the ball for a long period of time on their last possession and moved it down uh, until they had to give it up uh, on a fourth down play. So uh, let's see if, uh, if Valeri can continue the good defense that they've been playing so far. Straight ahead with Stargell, bounces off a tackler. Mason misses, he's to the outside and down the sidelines, but forced out of bounds. And wow. I'll tell you what, one more step and he was gone. They're coming up with a play, forcing him out of bounds. Number 28 for the Big Reds, Jeremiah Johnson. And uh, a good play there because Stargell was gone, and a good play by Stargell bouncing off the line of scrimmage. I tell you, they had him right here. They had the off tackle was all closed up, but right there he just bounces off, and once he gets to the outside, he's real dangerous because he's had such great speed. But you'll see that he's pushed out of bounds right there. And uh, but still, first down on the 22-yard line. High formation again with Stargell. Hand off to Burton, the fullback. He's straight ahead for nothing. I said the 22, it should do, I should have said the 27. Gains about two, Bill, so it'll be second and eight. It's full back inside. Picked up two. Didn't think he got that much. I tell you, these guys have, a, have the ability to, to hit up in there and when everything is closed off, just to slide off of that and get to the outside. And uh, both Burton and Stargell have enough speed to where they're able to get some yardage when there really isn't any to get. Rhodes split to the near side. Option. Howell bottled up, maybe a yard on the play. Coming in there, big number 66 for the Big Reds. We've called his number a number of times uh, tonight. Number 66, Chad Farmer making the tackle. You, good job that time by number 84, Josh Ostrander. You see him right here. Keeps his shoulders parallel to the line of scrimmage and, and puts Howell into a position where he doesn't know what to do. Forces Howell to the inside where the inside pursuit can catch up with him. And Chad Farmer does a good job of coming off his block, making the tackle third and six. Dusty Holt also getting in on the action. 
third and five. Ursuline trying to come up with a first down, keep their drive alive. They go with the option. Howell will be turned back at the 35-yard line. He maybe gets across to the 37, it's but gonna I think be he's going to be short. It's going to be close. It all depends on what kind of spot they get. He had to get to about the 37-yard line, but uh, it looks like he's going to be about a yard short. It'll be fourth down and one, maybe a little bit less than one. 8.25 to go. Ursuline, I uh, would imagine, will punt the ball away. Well, now all of a sudden it's gotten a little bit closer. I'm going to take a measurement here, Coach, and you hate to see that if you're Coach Magistro that the ball's all the way on the other side yeah, of the field right, right in front of the other coach. Really? See how the chain stretches on this one. All right. I'll tell you, all of a sudden it was from fourth down to first down. Wow. Well, Howell more leg drive than we gave him credit for, Coach, as he picks up the first down. Here it is right here. He's on the option. He's keeping it all the way. Farmer has a shot at him and misses. And right there, number seven, Pitts comes up on the on the hit. And uh, I, I, tell you, I, I don't know. It, it's really hard to see from that angle exactly where he did go out. But it's a first down. Rhodes to the near side again. Angel on the wing. It's Stargell in the backfield. In the I formation behind Burton. And it's Stargell on the carry. Looking to get outside. Gets by one man. Pitts in pursuit. And it is Tuttle coming up with a stop at the 47-yard line of Bel Air. And a first down again from Stargell. And this is a big defensive uh, Stand here for the Big Reds. Nothing, nothing ball game, Coach. 8.06 to go. Here it is. That's that uh, tailback counter with the backside guard and backside tackle pull, and there's nothing there, and he just does this on his own. He beats number 42 uh, to get to the outside. That was Sean Valoric, and then number two, uh, Jason Tuttle has to come up and make the tackle, but not until after he moves it over into Belair's territory at their 48-yard line, first and 10. Straight ahead with Burton. Still on his feet. Good second effort to pick up a couple of yards. Second down and eight. I tell you, there wasn't any running room at all for Burton, but he's able to just keep on moving laterally until he finds a little crease, a little seam, and then he just busts up field once he feels no pressure. And right there, what looked like a no-gain play ends up being a two-yard gain. So it's going to be second and eight. I really like Burton. He's a nice hard runner and a very, very good blocker. Second down and seven. Ball spotted on the 45-yard line of Bel Air. Pitch to Stargell. Looks to the outside. Has some running room. Valoric with one hand takes him down from behind. But all of a sudden, he's getting to that corner a little easier each and every down, Coach. I tell you, Bel Air has to start putting more pressure on that. They've got to start making more penetration, forcing him back to the inside. They can't give him the corner. Right here, you'll see number two, Tuttle, gets caught inside. He's got outside contain on the ball. And fortunately, right here, Valoric is able to use it, um, enough of his speed to where he can bring Stargell down from behind. But they need to penetrate and force that pitch much quicker than what they have been so far. We have an official timeout down on the field. Burton has a shoe to be tied. And interesting thing, wondering if it came a little loose to give his tail back a little bit of a breather. No, I don't think so. It's a Catholic school. They wouldn't do that, would they? <laughs> In the playoffs, schools are bound to do anything, Coach. Stargell to the outside. And Tuttle forces him out of bounds after a gain of about seven. Tell you, Blair's, Blair's starting to look a little tired now. If if Burton didn't do it to give his uh, tailback a rest, that's exactly what he accomplished by having sure his shoelace did. come undone. Here's a replay. Starts over the left side, and he's looking for the cutback all the way. And right there, you can see 53, Bohas misses. And I'll tell you, the defensive backs from Belair are making too many tackles right now. And that front seven has to do a much better job of getting to the ball carrier. Youngstown, Ursuline eating up a lot of clock as well as a lot of yards. Angel in motion, handoff goes to the fullback, Burton. He's into the secondary and taken down by Scott Pitts, number 44, inside the 20-yard line. All of a Another sudden. first down for uh, Ursuline, and they are methodically moving the ball downfield. Clock continues to roll inside of 630. 
And I'll tell you, big number 22 checks into the ball game for Stargell. That's Rashad Chambers, and we'll see if they go right at him with Rashad. That's generally what they've done when he's come into the ball game. Angel to the near side. Chambers straight ahead into the line of scrimmage, breaks a tackle, oh, and a shoestring tackle save. And we'll take a look at the number and who made the play. Number 70 or number 10, I believe it was, Coach. Number 16. That's who, that's who got a hand on him. It's J.R. Hall. Here he is right here. He bounces to the outside, and Hall just gets him by the ankle and trips him up from behind. Remind me to go for my eye checkup because... You want to borrow mine? <laughs> And off to Burton, into the line of scrimmage. Good job that time. Great penetration by number 68 that time. That's Josh Weber. Uh, made good penetration and uh, forced Hall to uh, bounce that to the outside. We'll see it on a replay right here. No, I'm sorry, that was number 66, Chad Farmer. Chad Farmer's having a good defensive football game from that defensive left tackle position. Third and four, ball into 12. Chambers, the big tailback, look for him straight ahead. Hand off to Chambers, slips and goes into the line of scrimmage. It'll bring up fourth it. and four. It's gonna be fourth and about maybe three, Bill. I tell you, they've got an excellent field goal kicker. Uh, I don't know if Coach will do, no, they're gonna go for it. They're bringing Stargell back into the ball game. I think you probably go for it here, and you figure you may, if your defense can come up with a big stop, get some field position, but 4.39 to go. Three points would look awful big on the scoreboard. Sure would, and they've got the wind at their back. But look for Stargell on the pitch sweep. Look for them to try to draw big, the big reds off. Pitch there to Stargell to the outside, and he's going to make it. What a play. What a play by the Bel Air defense. Number 42, Sean Valoric finally came up and forced that play and did a great job of bringing down Stargell for not a no gain, but a loss. Number 35, Rich Mamie came in and also made a big play defensively. Wow, great perimeter defense that time. The pitch sweep that has been so successful for him right here. And here you see number 42, John Valoric. He's being held on the play. Valoric was being pulled down from behind. There could have been a flag there. A great defensive play. And then May Mamie comes in and cleans up. Great job that time by Belair's defense. Now they got to put yep. something together on the, in the next four minutes. And listen to this crowd. The Bel Air Big Reds faithful has exploded. Scott Pitt still on his feet, spinning out to the 20-yard line. A play that was designed to go, well, after the defense looked at it nowhere, Pitts turns into a five-yard game. I tell you, good gain on first down. Here it is. It's just a blast play over the right side. He sees nothing right here. He feels his way, breaks one tackle, breaks two tackles, does a little spin, breaks another tackle, and gains five yards all on his own. A great job that time by the junior, uh, by the junior tailback, Scott Pitts. 3.39. Clock rolling, second and five. Bel Air just came up with the biggest defensive stand of the season. Davis back to pass, looks downfield, lots of time, looking long for Mason. He has it to 50 yard line. What a Got catch! It to 45. Wow! Unbelievable. Hey, it's straight down the middle to Mark Mason. Is split in number 86. He waited and waited and waited. Great protection. And delivered a strike to Mason, who running a post, and he couldn't have been covered any better than that. There's Davis sitting in the pocket, puts the ball up, and right there he just goes up for it, had great Almost position. Well, the Big Reds in position at the 43. Pitts straight ahead, spinning, spinning, still on his feet, and he'll be close to a first down. Going to be a little short. It'll be short about a yard and a half. But what a great effort by number 42 or number 44, Scott Pitts. This is just a blast play over the left side. Nothing there. He rolls off of that. Boy, what a great effort right here by that junior tailback. And I'll tell you, Bill, that whole offensive backfield is back next year because Scotty Coyne, the uh, or I'm sorry, but Casey Coyne, the fullback, is only a sophomore. High formation, Mason split to the near side. And it's Scott Coyne with the reception, ball down to the 25-yard line. 
And I'll tell you what, the Big Red starting to feel it. Clock stopped with 2.17 to go. First and 10, ball at the 25-yard line. The big, key, the big key, here, key here now, Coach, hold on to the football. That's right. There it is right there. Great fake by Davis. Good throw. Coin just tucks his head and gets as much as he can. First down Time at the out. 25, and Ursuline is going to spend one of their timeouts to, this to try to pull it together. We take a timeout. Nothing, nothing ball game. 2-10 to go. Bel Air knocking on the door. Welcome back to the, Young, the Youngstown Ursuline Big Red uh, Bel Air game. And I'll tell you what, Bel Air just got the ball. There's 2-10 left in the game, and uh, the fans are going wild, as you can tell. Bel Air not letting down a good game out there. Two very strong teams, and these fans just want a touchdown. They're very excited to be here, and uh, it's a good game so far, and it's heating up. Back to you, Bill and Rich. Thank you very much, Lisa. 2-10 to go, Coach. It's first and 10 from the 25-yard line. What do we look for from the Big Reds here? I tell you, they're just going to keep going what they're doing. They're going to run the ball on first down and look for the pass on second down if they need to. Play action. Their running game is starting to come now, Bill. You know, late in the fourth quarter now, they're, they're successful running the football. So, you know, I, I would imagine they're going to do exactly that. They got 2-10 and three, and three timeouts. There's... Hand Coyne. off to Casey Coyne. Over the left side, gets a couple. Got the ball in the middle of the field. Jose Davis so good at carrying out his fakes. Tough to tell sometimes who has the football. Here it is right here. Bohas pulling and trying to trap right there. Clock Gain rolling. of one, second and nine from inside the 25 of Youngstown Ursuline. Let's see if he goes upstairs. 144 to go. Davis under center. Hand off the pitch. Big He's got room. room. He's going to head to the outside. Cut oh, back and falls down my. at the 12-yard line. It will look like Scott Pitts got to the secondary. There was so much grass in front of him with no defenders. He almost panicked because he didn't know where to go. That's right. And I'll tell you, you usually tell your, you usually tell your back, put your nose to the sideline and then run to the end zone. And right here, he just he's got plenty of room around. to go there. And instead, he tries to cut it back and is brought down at about the 11-yard line, first and 10 from there. Now the clock rolling, 1.20 to go. I'll tell you what, Steubenville Central East knocks a great game. Another great game on WTOV9. First and 10. Handoff straight ahead for Casey Coyne, just picking up a couple, really just kind of calming everybody down a little bit, get their heads back together and see what they can do. Clock going to be down to about well, 105. They take a timeout. Youngstown Ursuline takes a timeout, and the Bel Air Big Reds currently are nine yards away, Coach, from winning their first ever playoff game in the school's history. But uh, 105 left to go in the game. Here's the last play. We're going to see Coyne come here. Looks like a, an inside trap, but uh, yeah, Ursuline does a good job of stacking it up. Number 66 does a good job of recognizing the trap. That's Mike Frasco. He just uh, clogs everything up inside. No, nowhere to go for Coyne. But... If Go ahead. Bill. If I wanted to ask you, if you're uh, John Magistro, you're uh, nine yards away, your team from getting in, they can pick up a first down at the one yard line. What are you telling them in this in this timeout? I think the main thing that he wants to try to impress on his offense is, you know, let's let's really take care of the football. Let's keep doing what we've been doing, but let's take care of the football. We don't want a turnover. We're in the driver's seat right now. If we can't score a touchdown on these next two downs, we can kick a field goal to win this game. But more than anything else, I think that he's trying to impress upon them. Guys, don't turn it over. Mason and Coyne in a slot to the near side. Casey Coyne and Pitts in the backfield. Second down and eighth. Hand off to Pitts across the five-yard line and stopped at about the four. He'll be short of the first down by about three yards. Call it third and three. Clock rolling, 53 down to 50 seconds now, and it looks like we may have... And they got the ball right in the middle of the field, Bill. Farrier checks into the ball game with a play for Jose Davis. Clock down to 40 seconds to go. Nothing, nothing ball game. If they don't score on this or get the first down, I think they'll call timeout and go for the field goal. High formation with Pitts in the backfield. Pitts straight ahead down to the one. He'll be close to the first down. It depends on where the spot is. Kate, or Scott Stop Coyne, the clock. Stop the clock. They have stopped the clock. They will uh, take a look at a measurement, I believe, Coach. Yeah, they may be a little short.
Ooh. You're inside the two yard line and Belair spends a timeout. It's fourth and one. Take a look at it here. Right here, great blocking by the right side of that offensive line. A good a good surge right here by, I'll tell you, there's a face mask That's right there. That's what Scott Coyne was pleading his case down there on the field, but no one would listen to him. Well, I'll tell you, it's fourth down, about a half a yard to go. They just checked, Bel Air just checked. They believe they have one timeout remaining. They do have one timeout remaining. Uh, and right now they have probably the toughest yard and a half they'll have to get or ha have attempted to get in their uh, school's history. What do you do? Do you kick the field goal here or do you right go now, for it? Right now, I kick the field goal. I get the points right now. Well, let's find out exactly what happens. Scott Pitts has his helmet off. He's heading back to the sideline, so I think that's what they're going to do. They're going to try to kick it through the uprights. Ball right about in the middle of the field. And they are being called back on, out onto John. the field. Come on, John. They have their field goal unit out there, and they do have a good kicker because this kicker won the game uh, for Belair against us at Edison. Uh, last play of the game with a 30-yard field goal, and this is number 16. J.R. Hall holding his Tuttle. Snap is good. Spot is down. Kick is up, and it is not even close. I tell you, there's 20 seconds left, and uh, Ursuline's going to get the ball first and 10 from their own 20, and uh, I would anticipate that we're going to see this game go into overtime. Well, J.R. Hall took a crack at it, and unfortunately came up way wide. We'll take a look. Good angle here to look at it. Uh, just like he cooked kick the very bottom of the ball really not only that but zone. if you look at his toe he pointed his toe instead of uh, you know bringing that toe up and in and uh, got under the ball and just sailed it to the left of the upright well 20 seconds to go so Bel Air drives all the way down on the field to about the yard and a half boy what a great drive that really was too Bill it was just an outstanding job by that offensive line of Bel Air and uh, pitch looked real real good and uh, so did Davis. And right here, they're going to kill the clock. So Youngstown Ursuline will take a knee, and the clock should run out on regulation, and we will head to overtime. And this WTOB9 high school football playoff game of the week, and remember that big drive started with a great defensive stand that turned the Youngstown Ursuline Fighting Irish away at the 15-yard line. So clock runs out, and the Bel Air Big Reds We'll head to the sideline and talk things over. They will head to overtime with the Fighting Irish of Youngstown Ursuline. We'll take a timeout. We'll come back with the extra session. From the Ohio. The Ohio Valley Athletic Conference, established in 1943, is the largest high school sports conference in the United States. 44 member schools and well over 12,000 athletes compete in the OVAC. Every winter, the OVAC is host to the largest high school wrestling tournament in the country. And each summer, the Valley's best are showcased in the Rudy Mumley Charity All-Star Football Game. The OVAC sponsors a variety of tournaments and a number of sports. The list of athletes who have competed in the OVAC reads like a who's who. The OVAC, celebrating 50 years of excellence. Hey, Thunderbird fans, don't miss Thunderbird Close-Up every Sunday at noon on WTOV9. Thunderbird Close-Up is a weekly 30-minute in-depth look at your wheeling Thunderbirds. News 9 Sports' Bill Phillips, David Bloomquist, and the voice of the Thunderbirds, Dave Gosher, will give you a chance to get to know the players up close and personal. Thunderbird coach Doug Souter gives you his team's winning strategy and shows you the finer points of hockey. Watch Thunderbird Close-Up this Sunday at noon on WTOV9, your wheeling Thunderbird television station to overtime the coin toss coach a very important coin toss here in overtime and who comes up a winner okay uh, whoever looks wins like the coin has toss won the will toss have, will have a choice of either going on offense or defense what would if, you choose coach generally I, I think generally the winning team will choose defense first well, the Bel Air Big Reds uh, talking about it, and uh, the reason I would imagine you would want to go on defense first, you know exactly what you have That's to get right. when you're on offense. That's right. If the other team kicks a field goal, you know that you can kick a field goal if you have to. Now, the team that, uh, now, now Bel Air can either take offense, defense, or pick whatever end of the field they want. Uh, the, the overtime 
first overtime period to be played. The other team then will, of course, go on offense or defense. They have their choice. Let's explain the overtime session. Uh, the, the ball will be spotted at the 20-yard line. Correct. And both teams will have a crack at it. So the first team that gets the ball will have uh, an option. To, well, they get the ball at the 20-yard line. They have four downs to get a first down. And then they have another option to go in the end zone. Now, if Correct. they want to stop and kick a field goal, they can do that. And then the Correct. ball is given over to the other team. Correct. Now, if the other team equals what the team, the previous team, the first team put on the board, then we'll go to another overtime session. Right, and we'll keep on playing overtime sessions that way until someone is a winner. Now, last year, uh, one of the games that we had the privilege of doing, Barnesville in the playoffs, Josh Marks nailed a field goal late in overtime through the snowflakes that were coming down out in Columbus mm -hmm. on that night, and Barnesville right. advanced in uh, overtime last year, and right now, the Bel Air Big Reds and the Youngstown Ursuline Fighting Irish fighting for an opportunity to play in the second round of the Ohio Division III postseason. Nothing, nothing ball game, a very exciting regulation, even though there's no score on the scoreboard. We saw just about everything we could see except a touchdown or a field goal, Coach. I tell you, both teams moved the ball fairly well, and both teams played really excellent defense. When they had to, they, they seemed to be able to rise to the occasion defensively. So right here, we're going to see Ursuline with the ball, first and 10 from the 20-yard line, and Belair on defense. And they will be playing uh, into the end zone to our right. Interesting lineup here, Coach. You're going to have Stargill split to the far side. He'll be guarded one-on-one -on -one with Scott Coyne. Chambers in the tailback position. And when you have Stargill, a man with that much speed and ability on the outside, I would figure you're going to look for a pass sooner or later as Chambers goes straight ahead for about three yards on first down. will bring up second and seven. And that might just be a situation where you may be trying to set up a reverse, set up something. But I would imagine all game long you haven't tried anything razzle-dazzle. Why would you do it now? Well, I think what they're trying to do, one of the things they're trying to do is to, to get them out of that nine-man front for one thing. And when you put Stargell out there on the uh, the flank, uh, what you do is, is you, you have to cover him with one defender and you want to move one defender over that way, you know, in his direction so that that, that removes somebody from that oh, area. A big mistake. It looks like someone jumped in the Youngstown Ursuline line. The Bel Air Big Red saw it immediately. And the motion penalty goes against Youngstown Ursuline. That'll cost them. And Stargell out of the game right now. He checked out while Angel checked in. He'll be coming back into the ball game with the play. Take a look at it again. And once you're down in your set position, that's it. Can't move. It looked like the center did. Yeah, sure did. Simulated a snap. Stargell back in the ball game in the I formation. Second down and 12 for Ursuline. Pitch to Stargell. Option with Stargell. Stargell gets it. He'll be turned back inside. And it looks like Sean Valoric, the first man to meet him, took a hold of that right leg and he said, that's as far as you're going to go, sir. Uh, he he him held right him down. up and Chad Farmer came and put the closer on him. I tell you, Valoric has done an excellent job on the flank, uh, forcing everything back to the inside, and he's done a good job matching a little bit of uh, Stargell's speed himself. And I'll tell you, this puts Ursuline in a real, real tough situation. Third and 16. Ursuline has a very good field goal kicker right now. Third down, a big play. If you can keep them to a little gain, it may take them out of field goal range with a wind blowing into their face. Stargell in the eye formation. Howell back to pass, looking up to set a backside screen, but he goes to the near side or the far side, and coming up, making the play defensively are the Big Reds. Vince Burton, the antenna receiver, he hauled it in, and then Sean Valoric knocked him down. But, Coach, the interesting thing on that rollout the other way, Stargell just floated to the backside. Yeah, he was right. wide open. If Howell turned around, open. he had him. But I don't think they have a play designed to do that, Bill, but uh, just a fake on Stargell's part coming back this way. But I'll tell you, if they've got, if they've got that in their repertoire, they ought to use it. I tell you, Valoric has really become a very, very important defensive force here in the uh, second half. And I'll tell you, he, he put a great hit on Burton right there, took him right off his feet. Well, if you are the uh, coaches for Youngstown Ursuline and you saw that play and you have a fourth down situation right now, fourth and about 15, short side of the field is now right in front of your bench. I would just let Stargell do the same thing, maybe float out towards the bench while... Uh, your quarterback rolls to the uh, near side 
and throw back to him because he was wide open. The big Reds were nowhere near him. Well, Bill, you know, in football, you just can't diagram those up in a dirt over on hey, the sideline. Hey, Bernie, line, Bernie you know? Kozar drew uh, one up in the dirt on his last play as a Brown and scored a touchdown, and then he was sent packing to Dallas. Well, that's why he got <laughs> sent packing to Dallas, because he drew one up in the dirt. Well, the coaches' plays weren't working. I tell you, they're going to try a field goal right here, and I'll tell you, this is going to be a long one, about uh, 43 yards. It looks like Bill Peak, number 10. And Belair has to be very, very aware and very uh, alert uh, to, to any type of fake. Coach, you can draw anything up at any time. That's right. <laughs> well, here it is. Ball be spotted on the 32-yard line. A 42-yard field goal attempt by Bill Peak. The snap is good. The spot is down. The kick is up, and it's not even close. Bel Air can pick that up, but that's it. No, that ends the series. They can't advance it like they can no. in college. Now, I tell you, Bel Air will now have an opportunity from the 20-yard line at the same end of the field. They will have it first and 10 from the 20. Here we go again. And there's Coach Magistro drawing up some plays in the dirt on his sideline. <laughs> You get that chalkboard out, or maybe you get the bottle cap and the, and the stone, and you set them all up. You get your receivers ready to go. Bel Air Big Reds, first opportunity here in overtime. Coach, what do we look for? Look for them on the ground with Pitts or Jose same, Davis? Same thing that they've been doing. They moved the ball fairly well, real, real well the last time they had it. Put it down in scoring position. Look for them to do the same thing. They're going to try to run the football and throw it when they have to. High formation with Pitts. Hand off to Pitts, and he is bottled up and taken down for about a yard lose loss. A yard. Number 54 coming through. McLandrick for Youngstown Ursuline making the tackle at the 21-yard line. Here it is on a replay. It's a blast play over the, the left side. He's trying to cut it back, but McLandrick is there in really good shape and takes down Pitts for a loss of one. It's going to bring up second and 11 from the 21. Valoric split to the near side. Mason split to the far side. Coin set up in a little bit of a slot formation or a wing formation to the far side. Davis back to pass, looks downfield, then he steps up in the pocket, looks for Coin in a dangerous play as it goes incomplete. And bring up third down and 11 for the Big Reds. Looking for Coin on that drag play underneath, Coach. I tell you, they, uh, they held him up at the line of scrimmage, and he was a little slow getting into his pattern and uh, forced Davis out of the pocket. And by the time he found Coin and tried to get him the ball, it was a little too late. It's third and 10, or third and 11 from the 21. Split backs in the backfield, Coin and Pitts. Slot to the far side. Davis back to pass. He has Coin wide open oh. at the 15, and he dropped the football. And I'll tell you, he had some room to run after the catch because number 86, Mark Mason, was down there as a blocker. And uh, I'll tell you, Mason was running a, a hook pattern at about uh, 10 yards deep, and Coin came out of the backfield underneath, and he's wide open. Here he is right here. The ball's delivered right on the money, and he's trying to run before he catches the ball. The Big Reds take a timeout down on the field. They're going to talk things over. Coach, uh, you mentioned earlier in the game when the Big Reds attempted their field goal with J.R. Hall that he has the leg. Do you try to line him up for a field goal here on fourth down? It'd be about a 37-yard uh, field goal attempt into the win. Give him another crack at it. I, I don't think he's going to. I don't think he'll try it at this distance. This would make it about a 37-yard field goal. You know, into the wind. Although they are in the middle of the field, that you know, that that's a pretty health, that's a pretty healthy, healthy kick. You can see right there the uh, the one thing that you the you tapes don't, on top of the uprights blowing pretty good right into his face. You don't lose uh, anything by trying the field goal because it's your fourth down. Uh, but if you can come up with 10 yards, you can pick up a first down. You don't have to score from the 20. That's you right. can pick up the first at the 10-yard line. Absolutely. And uh, right now, heading back onto the field, it looks like. It'll be the offense once again. And they have Oh no, they're gonna try the field goal with Mason, number 86. Kicker, number 86. He is kicks try off. It. And we remember the big leg at the start of the second half kickoff. He knocked it all the way into the end zone. Ball will be spotted by Tuttle at the 27. He made 37 be a yard too attempt. Close. And it is up and it is short. Looked like someone may have gotten a piece of it for Youngstown Ursuline, but they take a crack at the field goal and they'll go back on defense, the big reds and Ursuline. 
No, oh. they'll have another flip of the coin now, Bill. They'll, they'll have another flip yeah, of the coin. they'll have another flip. Sorry about that. I think. Because they have the option now, I believe Youngstown Ursula will probably get the option of whether or not they want to start on defense or offense. Well, we'll find out. I tell you, this, this just goes to show how important the kicking game really is. Uh, you know, both teams unsuccessful at field goals and uh, how important those field goal uh, kickers really are. And uh, the game could have been won uh, by, uh, by Belair uh, had they been able to convert right there, but unfortunately they weren't able to. So as a result of that, we go into a second overtime period now. And neither team has been successful getting the ball into the end zone with any type of score whatsoever. And I, this really surprises me that we have a nothing-nothing score after a regular regulation and one overtime. Well, Coach, while we have a, a chance here, while the two teams uh, regroup and the officials decide uh, what they're going to do, we, uh, of course, have the Star Trek Marathon taking care of some business here. That's coming up at uh, 2 a.m. or immediately following this game, uh, the Star Trek Marathon on WTOV9. And Coach will leave the light on. You can stop by and check out the marathon with Coach. And then, of course, tomorrow it's Thunderbird Close-Up starting at noon and then NFL Live at 12.30. And then we have some action for you at 4 p.m. The Cleveland Browns and the Seattle Seahawks, and that one will be played out in Seattle. The Browns will have their hands full, and we'll find out if uh, Todd Philcox is the answer to that offense for the Cleveland Browns as we take a look back down on the field now for uh, our second coin flip for a decision as to what will happen with the football at the start of the second overtime session. Being that uh, Belair won the toss at the beginning of this, this overtime session, uh, Ursuline now has the choice of either taking the ball, going on defense, or choosing one end or the other. They, they made their decision, and then Scott Coyne, uh, the captain for Belair, chose to play uh, this overtime period at the opposite end of the field, which would be to our left, uh, for this overtime period. Coach, one quick... Well, inside of the image video truck. That is, that is the heart of this operation going on right now. That is the beehive. That is the center of this whole thing that is being uh, telecast and, today. And if I recall, the Philadelphia Phillies lost. Philadelphia what? Phillies. What's that? That's a baseball team that lost in the World Series. But we're talking football. We're talking overtime, and the Big Reds have the first crack at it in double overtime. They'll pick it up first and 10 from their own 20-yard line with the wind at their back here in the overtime session. Davis, play action, has some room to roll to the far side, looks downfield into the end zone, and it is overthrown. It looked like Farrier, the intended receiver, number five, incomplete and out of bounds as Davis got some pressure, Coach, but uh, the Bel Air taking a crack at the end zone on the first play. I tell you, Scott Coyne from a slot back position running a deep post pattern, and uh, Davis trying to put the ball into the end zone on first down, so now they're going to be up second and 10 from the 20. They've been real successful with their uh, short to medium passing game, so we'll see if they go back to that now on second down split backs. Davis back to pass. Looks out in the flat oh, for Coyne, and Coyne he drops, drops the second ball in a row. Wow. I'll tell you, that's the second time he's been open, and uh, second pass that he's dropped, and it, it was right there. The ball delivered right on time. But, uh, you know, Scotty Coyne just a little anxious right here trying to get the ball and run before he, he makes the catch. Coach, is that overtime nerves? I don't think so. I, I think he just, you know, he's so anxious to make something happen that, uh, you know, he's just forgetting the fundamentals of, uh, you know, catching the ball before he tries to make a run. Farrier to the far side, Coyne to the near side, Pitts and Coyne in the backfield. Davis pump action to the oh, far he's side. Got he's in got Coyne in the end zone. Touchdown! What a catch! Scott Coyne holds it in. An unbelievable catch, and the Big Reds jump on top. Wow, what a move. I'll tell you, I was watching Scotty Coyne all the way. He made a little move to the inside, and then a, he ran a corner route. And right there, right on the money, is where Davis put the ball in a great catch by Coyne in the end zone. I tell you, this point becomes real, real important right here. And if they're not ready, they ought to call a timeout. 
We have a we have a timeout down on the field as we take a look at the replay. Coin with a great play. Let's go down to Lisa Kick and a timeout on the field. She's going to talk to Scott Coin. Hopefully, we can grab him again very quickly. Here's Davis. He's looking at Coin all the way, and what a move Coin really made. Had his defender turned around and just stretches out and makes the catch in the end zone for the touchdown. The thing, and I'll tell you, what a perfect pattern he ran. The thing that made that play possible, and I think really helped Coin get open, was a little pump fake that Davis made to the other corner of the end zone, and then he came right back, and that's when Coin got the step on the defender, and then a great catch climbing up the ladder to get it at the at his highest point. Well, I tell you, they had him set as a flanker to this side, and he, he made a real hard move into the post. Defender went with him, and then he just planted that inside foot and ran to the corner, and that's where the ball was delivered perfectly. Now, Lisa Kick's going to try to grab Scott Coyne real quick while they attempt this extra point, and we'll try to get a word with Scott Coyne. Uh, he may be too intense to talk to anybody right now. Celebrating with Jose Davis right now, a big extra point. J.R. Hall, number 16 on. Tuttle will do the hold. Snap is good, spots down, kick is up, and it is blocked. Wow, so that's it'll a be big six block. To nothing. That's a that's big, a big block. block. And we will get ready for Youngstown Ursuline trying to tie this one up. Maybe Lisa could get a word with Jose Davis, number four, who's still on the sideline, sitting on the bench, waiting to hopefully not go back out there and play some more offense. He's hoping he's done for the evening. But Ted, this, this defensive unit from Belair has to really get pumped up now. And, you know, they've stopped Youngstown Ursuline several times during the course of this game. They've kept them out of the, uh, the end zone this entire ball game. And now they're being asked to do it just one more time. We have a timeout down on the field. And it looks like it'll be charged Youngtown, Youngstown Ursuline, I think, Coach. Timeout down on the field. And Lisa kicks down on the field with Jose Davis. Lisa? I got it out there so he need to catch it because he's the best receiver in the valley. Yeah, you're doing a good job with your passing today, man. Thanks a lot. How do you feel about being in the playoffs the first time? I love it. I'm just glad I'm a part of the first team ever as a sophomore. And I plan to go there a few more times. All right, great young. Good luck to you, Jose. Thanks a lot for talking to us. Back to you, Rich and Bill. Thank you very much, Lisa. Jose Davis is a very excited young man, and he's planning on coming back next year and the year after. A few after. more times, he said. Hopefully, <laughs> hopefully, he'll be playing a few more games this year. Well, I tell you, right now, that all depends upon what this defensive unit can do is what they're capable of doing, and it's going to it's going to take a, a big, big effort from this these 11 guys that are out there on the field right now in the white shirts. Ursuline, of course, they're thinking that you know, they can get it in, and they've got to be real careful because number 20, Stargell, is lined up as a wing back, and he had a big gainer earlier in the ball game from that position when he ran a wing back counter back to the left side. So Belair has to be aware of that right now. Scott Coyne is heading back to the sideline. Something wrong with his equipment, I believe. The official was checking out his jersey. I'm not really sure exactly what's wrong with it. I but, tell you, uh, he had his jersey tied in knots, and they're not that, that that's against uh, the rules. You're not allowed to have your uh, your jersey tied in knots. There it is. And off the Stargell, and he is taken down after a gain of about five, coming through, knifing through number 35. I believe that's, that's Mamie. That's inside linebacker, Rich Mamie. He made a nice play to trip him up. If he doesn't get a hand on him, he may be gone. Did I call this, though? Did I call the wing back counter or sure what? Sure did. There it is right here. Good speed coming back this way, but Mamie there making the hit. Good some job. People, some people would like to see you down there on the sidelines. Still, yeah. Coach, what do you think of a comeback? I, I'm just I'm just wondering if I can climb down this ladder after this game's <laughs> over, let alone get to the sideline. That could be the toughest task of the night right now. Second down and six. Chambers is your tailback. Chambers straight ahead, flags all over the place. Chambers into the secondary, still on his feet. Nothing. He's into the end zone, Nothing but I don't think it's going to count. I think uh, the fullback, number 24, moved prior to the snap. They're going to be called for illegal motion. And that is what it is. 
We see it on the replay. We'll see number 24 moving prior to the snap. And this touchdown is going to be called back by Chambers. Take a look at it again, coach. We don't see it, but uh, Burnett was move or Burton was moving prior to the snap. Good, good run right here by uh, Chambers, but it goes for nothing. So it's going to bring up a second and 11 from the 21. And they're going to keep Chambers in there at tailback. Coach, do you, do you draw off that play I was talking about before, the little screen to the backside if you're uh, Youngstown Ursuline? I tell you, right now they'll probably try anything. Well, another timeout down on the field. Our score, 6-0. Second down and 11 for Youngstown Ursuline. They trail it by six points. Need a touchdown and an extra point to win this one. They need a touchdown to even it up and send it into a third overtime period. Field goal will do no good. There's Coyne. That's, that's the man of the hour right now. Scott Coyne making that great catch in the end zone to put Belair up 6-0 here in the second overtime period. I'll tell you what, Coach, uh, two playoff games this week on WTOV9, and you can't ask for more excitement than we've had in these first two games. And haven't the uh, the Valley teams really accounted themselves well on in the playoffs? On Friday night, five of six teams winning. It took uh, uh, River two overtime periods before they were eliminated, so a great performance on the opening night. Bel Air looks like they may go on to win. They have to hold here. So the Valley off to a great start. Second and 11. Stargill is your tailback. Angel goes in motion to the far side. He'll join Rhodes on that side. Howell Draw hands play. off to Stargill. Looks to get to the outside. Does. He's inside the 10. He has the first down. Still on his oh feet. My. And out of bounds at the three-yard line. He's at the one-yard line, Bill. Probably closer to the one. Oh, boy, I'll tell you, that's a heartbreaker right there. Here it is on a replay, just a, a draw play, and, and again, just great individual effort right here. Great speed. And number two, Tuttle. That's Jason Tuttle has to take him out of bounds. They've got first. a first down, first and goal from the three-yard line. You were right, Bill, the three-yard line. Well, now they move it to the two. Burton and Stargill in split backs. Angel goes in motion. Look for it over the left side. Burton into the end zone. Touchdown, Youngstown Ursuline. And now the big, important extra point and how important this kicking game really is. And this is not automatic either. Not by a long shot. Take a look at Burton it again. over the left side. Great blocking. Nobody touches him going in. A 6-6 ball game, double overtime. The Big Red score on the touchdown by Scott Coyne. On a second and 11 from the 21, Stargill goes all the way down to the two-yard line, and then it's Vince Burton into the end zone. The extra point to follow. Greg Gorasic is the extra point kicker. Snap is down, kick is up, and it is good! Well, I'll tell you, it floated through. It wasn't pretty, but it was effective. What a heartbreaking loss for Belair. What a fantastic high school football game, Coach. Double overtime, 7-6. As Youngstown Ursuline hangs on, the Bel Air Big Reds make their first trip to the playoffs a memorable one, but unfortunately in their first game they will come up one point shy. Lisa kicks down on the field. She'll try to get a word with head coach John Magistro, but how do you sum this one up, coach? Well, I tell you, you can't. It's just a disappointing loss. You know, they played their hearts out for two overtime periods, finally scored uh, in the second overtime on, on a great pass play from uh, Davis to Coyne. And you played great defense all night. You keep a, a real solid Ursuline team out of the end zone uh, for a regulation time and one overtime. And then to see it just slip away in, in, in the second overtime has got to be a real disheartening loss uh, to this outstanding group of uh, football players from Belair. 
Well, it's going to be a long bus ride home for the Big Reds, but I'll tell you what, this will be a ball game they remember for the rest of their lives, and a lot of those memories, of course, will be tough because you came up on the wrong end of the scoreboard, but at the same time, a lot of uh, wonderful plays and uh, accomplishments in the season for the Bel Air Big Reds, and okay. they played their hearts out really? in a double overtime. You know, and, and this is a young Bel Air football team, and this is something that, uh, you know, they can build on. I'm sure Coach Magistro is, is going to constantly remind them of that in the over, uh, you know, in the uh, uh, the off season. you know, what a great season they had, and, you know, they uh, they have the ability and the talent to to repeat and, and be even better next year than what they have been. And Jose Davis has already told us that they expect to be back a couple he of more times. to be back a few more times. And you have to take your hat off to uh, Youngstown Ursuline because they uh, were down six points. They were facing second and 11 in double overtime from the 21, and they picked up a great first down, and then they went in. So take your hats off to a fine team. Right now down to Lisa Kick with a disappointed John Magistro. I'm here with the coach of uh, the Big Reds, and uh, coach, a, a tough game today. Very tough. Our, our defense just did a good job. Uh, they've got a nice ball club, and uh, all I can say is we had our chances, and uh, we didn't take advantage of them, and uh, we're young, and I hope we got a lot of experience from it, and uh, I think we'll uh, do something about it and work on it for next year. Yeah, you see a lot of uh, star Jose Davis out there. Yes, he's a uh, quarter, and he's got two more years with us. we got a lot of kids out there with two years, and uh, I... Uh, uh, our seniors did a good job today, and everybody did a good job. And uh, I hope Ursula goes all the way, and we'll be back next year. Yeah, you hope this is a preview right. year. Right, huh? right, right. All right, well, thank you very much. Congratulations on getting to the playoffs. Well, thank you very much. All right, back to you, Rich and Bill. Thank you very much, Lisa. And you can see it in his face, Coach. Uh, just a heartbreaker yeah, right now tonight. Disappointment, really disappointment. But, you know, it's the old cliche, you know, these guys got nothing to be ashamed of. And, you know, they're, they're not going to be ashamed, but they're going to be awfully disappointed because they realize how close they really were to moving on to the next level. And, uh, you know, Coach Magistro and his staff have done a great job this year. You know, they've molded this team into a, an outstanding football team. And, and this team has got a lot of promise, and I look to see them back in the playoffs again next year. Well, it has been an outstanding ride for the Bel Air Big Reds. Everyone in the Valley has enjoyed it. Congratulations to them on a fine 1993 season for the Bel Air Big Reds. Unfortunately, in their first game in the playoffs, they come up one point short in double overtime. I'm Bill Phillips for the rest of the WTOV9 gang. So long.